Nika Getting trashed with the web screen pictures A cheap night cause I'm feeling kinda thrifty Got a ten pack of beers and a bottle of whiskey Hop up the cork, have a glass of wine That's what you'll say Trouble walking in a straight line But for the Amino Noir It's open bar With our host Muller and the critical drinker Well, well, here we are. It's me and Muller. The Hello. two of us are here. We're doing, we're doing an open bar again. Mm -hmm. why, why do we keep doing this? God damn it. Do we need to stop? Say, it's a downright pattern at this point. There's been more than three, maybe even four. It's ridiculous. We, we, I know, yeah. It, it's getting too predictable. We need to stop this shit. Who uh, even owns yeah. this bar that we keep going to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I like him if it's open bar every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But hey, we're here, and... Yeah, before we, we kick off the main stream, um, yeah, Mauler has got some great news. There's been a disturbance in the world of plushies, and Ooh. there is a new one available. It is long, it is it is logical, and it is filled with objectivism. Um, it true. is the Mauler plushie. Tell us about it, sir. Skull, skull tentacles, they, they move in a different way this time. He's looking a little bit mischievous. They actually changed the design a little bit in uh, different parts here and there. The eyes looking a little different. Still got the gas mask. Even comes with little detachable uh, poucho cookies this time. I figures it makes nice. the most sense, you know, if you're going to watch a movie and just have some cookies. Why not? Um, cookies, yeah. But yeah, a lot of people were like, I didn't get to pick it up last time. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. But uh, we got him, got him around this time. He's a bit different this time for those who want to pick up a different little looking one. But uh, of course, he's um, second generation. You get your, get your next chance. He's going to be around for, I think, 21 days. So think about it if you're interested. And uh, if you grab the fringy one along with him, then um, you get 10% off the both of them, which is a... Nice little plush set. It seems like everybody's collecting all of the plushified versions of all of us eventually. Um, everyone's having their own little cuddly armies. It's um, nice and sweet to have that in your, in, your, in your house. So, you know, think about it, folks. Links, Very presumably, nice. in the description. They are indeed, yeah. So if you click on the link at the bottom there uh, in the description, it'll take you to the makeship page where you can order your, your Moller plushie. So, yeah, like he says, if you're interested, give it a go because they're gorgeous. And I'm going to order one myself because I missed out Aww. last time. So I'm very excited by that. Um, but yeah, Mauler, yes. on to more serious subjects. Now, oh my. We, are, we are here to talk about the, the phenomenon that is She-Hulk, right? House but, of the She-Hulk. Yes, but it's a proven fact that you and I are toxic white men. And so True. we are not qualified to offer up opinions about this show. True. So... We have found the the target the target demographic. We have found a bunch of strong, empowered females who Ooh. can offer up their opinions instead. So, I think we should probably bring them in, and they can tell us what they think about it. How does that Let's sound? Do it. All right, I'm cool. On board with this. We have got Nina Infinity, Melanie Ooh. Mack, Ooh. and Christy Meyer. Yay! Oh my god! Yay! Let's go! Ooh, it's ladies' night. So many night. girls. Drink them if you got them. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. I just squirted on my computer. Great. Oh mm. wow, haven't we all? Starting off. <laughs> that's the best way to best way to start an open bar. It's yeah. that's, that's for later. Starting yeah. off real uh interesting already, Chrissy. Wow. Man. I like it. Yeah. What Melanie, what's going yeah. on, man? You've you've not got your sunglasses on and I am disappointed. Uh, I know I didn't get the memo, but I, I will be everybody's eyes today. If you need to see anything, I've got you. <laughs> that is that is fair dues. We've also got Anna coming in, uh, but she is slightly delayed. It would seem so. We, we decided uh, we just didn't care. And we, we <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> She's fashionably late. It's okay. She's allowed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I suppose I should ask. Like, I just want to, um, I guess, get a feel for everyone's position on this. What did you guys think of She-Hulk so far? How are you liking it? <sighs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, the glasses are glasses off. Came off. Wow. Oh, I don't no. have the added benefit of like years of uh of nerd background. Like I'm not an old school lifer fan. I'm in getting into this kind of new. So who knows? Like even as has said that like I'm their primary demographic. Like not an existing <laughs> fan. Yeah. Uh just basically Normie. the writing really feels like 30s you're living in brooklyn you're resentful of the fact that you that you work long hours but meanwhile you consciously pursued getting a degree and working in an office uh 
they're just sort of like I don't know the the main character. She's just she's very cranky and whiny, and uh, I'm just like I'm I'm not sure who this is for, right? And wine moms. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's for <laughs> wine moms. You know, when when they first dropped that first trailer, all that kind of stuff, I was actually interested at first until I saw all of the kind of like virtue signaling thing, the victimization of women. Okay, just right out the gate instantly mm -hmm. as soon as the episode starts like oh look i'm being mansplained oh poor me you know and so i think the idea of having a having this show directed toward women who aren't necessarily even marvel fans but just like hey let's go ahead and have like this this neat you know female superhero this really cool girl who's really strong and all this kind of stuff and funny but kind of gear it toward women in their 30s. I fit that demographic. I thought, oh, this could be fun. This could be great. But unfortunately, it's just so weighed down by trying to push a message more so than just to let itself be fun. And when you think of a property that's supposed to be fun, that is She-Hulk. And it's anything hmm. but fun. One of the worst comparisons I read was somebody was actually comparing this show to Deadpool and I was like God, I'm so, yeah and I was like oh no and like uh, seeing the word comedy thrown around when describing this show I know I'm only halfway into the second episode but right. based on my one and a half episodes of experience like I am personally still waiting for the comedy mm -hmm. yes. so, I can honestly say <laughs> I, not have not, get it. I have I, not laughed at a single moment of this show and it's yeah. You know, I'm not doing that just for effect or anything. It's like I, I don't even understand where the humor is meant to be derived from. It's like when they do try to crack jokes, they are the most like lame, cringy, yeah. just yeah, just like the most like safe mainstream opinions you could ever possibly offer up. It's not humor. It's not mm -hmm. stuff that's going to actually make you laugh. But they had it a map to wear to poop. That's funny. Oh yeah, oh, that was God. cute. Yeah. That was cute. Her her welcome basket. I wish someone. I've had so I many think... jobs. I wish somebody had shown me like a map of like the bad bathroom. <laughs> I think <laughs> find yeah. it yourself. Or go ahead, Nina. I, I've I, heard things in bathrooms, man. <laughs> I just wanted to say. Oh my God! I just wanted to say, like you, Melanie. I was actually like not not when the trailer dropped, mm -hmm. but when they said that uh, Tatiana Maslany was gonna be the the. She Hulk. I was actually kind of intrigued because I like her because I've seen her in Orphan Black and I was, uh, you know, I was very impressed with her acting chops. And I thought that if anyone can actually pull She Hulk off, it would be her because she's done multiple personalities. She's done that kind of thing before. And I mm -hmm. thought it would be really good. But the key with that is the the writing. The writing is so shit that no matter how good your acting chops are, they're not going to save the show. And that's what's going on with this show. It's that it, it it's just, as Drinker would say, the message. It's literally, that is ex that is why this show exists, is to push mm -hmm. this neo-feminist weird agenda where everyone, women are perpetual victims and somehow we're always like second best to men. And it's from out right out the gate, as you said, Melanie, it's all pushing that message over and over, over trying to hammer that in. And it's like, and I wonder the same thing as you guys, like who is this show made for? Because right. women don't want to be seen as perpetual victims and men don't want to see women trashing men all the time so it's just a very fucking weird show i'm sorry did, the did character of jen it's, like the she hulk character i kind of like the character of jen i think is very weak and she it's like i'm getting a lot of mixed signals like in one scene she'll be like oh that's it i'm on my own and the next scene she's taking a job without asking any mm -hmm. questions about it at all and I think she just comes off basically just very whiny and cunty. Like she's trying to pretend to be a strong woman, but like her actions aren't indicative of somebody who's like, fuck all this. I, I think as other people have pointed out, right. Um, that, that infamous scene where she rants at Bruce and she's like, you know, I'm infinitely better at controlling my anger because, you know, every time I get a, a, a mediocre man explaining my own field of expertise to me and I'm catcalled in the street and it's just like reeling off all these like first world it's problems. It's so that sexist only, too. Basically, oh my gosh. only like a kind of rich liberal white woman would ever care about. But, yeah. right. but what would be, what would make that work is if you actually saw her experience that in the course of the episode. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that very first scene where she does her little, um, 
she recites the court speech that she's about to give and her male uh, lawyer, who's like her partner or whatever, um, he's like, no, I think I should give the presentation. Um, and she just goes, nah, fuck off. And then he just like, gets booted <laughs> out of the room. And that's it. It's like, yeah. I'm doing the presentation. But he had I'm good hard. points, though. He you had know, good points. It was but so crazy. How, how much better would this have worked if he'd been senior to her in the partnership and he said, no, that's great, but I'm doing it because I don't think you can handle it. You're not ready yet. It was kind of patronizing. Right. And she got mm -hmm. pushed aside. You would feel bad for her. You would feel sure. sympathy. And you would you would relate to that. It's like, okay, she's a nice person. She's she's getting taken advantage of by assholes, basically. Yeah, we're and, being you know, told everything versus shown anything. Exactly. That's basically what's going the, on. The cat calling thing again. Like, imagine she's coming home from that day at uh, at court. You know, getting passed over for an opportunity, and like guys give her shit. Like guys outside a yeah. bar, they start harassing her, and she's scared, but she doesn't want to like provoke them, so she has to deal with that, and it's really difficult. And she gets back to her apartment, she's just like burned out by it. You know, that was really fucking stressful. I thought I was going to get mugged or something. Um, yeah. You know, again, that would help to build up her as a sympathetic character. And that would give that rant that she does later in the show uh, such much more impact and meaning because you've seen her go through this shit. But they don't. Every single time she comes out on top. And it's like, well, while what, while yeah, it's like there's... Here. They're they're trying to have a payoff without a setup, and so there's nothing to latch onto. This is but the drinker. From they the try. They actually did try to set up the cat calling thing for, in that bar scene mm -hmm. in the first episode, where the the dudes are like, "What?" They where do. she she hey, wakes up and she goes in the thing in the bathroom, and then all these women come. And I'm saying women in quotes because. A couple of them were definitely not women, but they come up in there and, you know, and they're like, let, let me like help you put some makeup on you, blah, blah, blah. And then they leave her alone when she's apparently been attacked. Mm -hmm. And then she gets approached by these guys who are like supposedly catcalling her or whatever. But that entire situation was set up so badly and cringy that you're like. I can't, I can't identify with this because this would never happen. Yeah, I'm like, life. what are they cat calling? I'm looking her because, up and down. I'm like, what are they cat calling? Yeah. Well, it's like this woman staggers out of the bathroom, right? She's dressed in like mismatched shit that got, like got hooks, thrown out. Yeah, it's like someone this. basically just like put a paintbrush of makeup on her, and like she looks like she just been dragged through a fucking bush backwards. And like, she's like these guys are like, oh man, I need to hit on her. She's like the hottest thing I've seen all night. It's like, no, <laughs> you can just be like, this girl's fucking out of her mind. She's a stereotype of the of the woman who like acts like such a victim. Meanwhile, every day she wakes up and chooses to be frumpy. It's like you don't, yeah. What's what's, what's it gonna be? But you, you know? bitch the, face. The, like obviously in that scene, she hulks up and she's about to kill them mm -hmm. and. Um, I love that moment where she turns into the Hulk, right? And like two of the guys just grab each other and like scream. It's it's like in yeah. Scooby Doo when like a monster appears and fucking Scooby yeah. throws, like, throws himself into Shaggy's arms and they're like, which is what men totally always do. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, men absolutely hug each other in crisis situations. Oh my but again, god, that scene! Oh, the, the writers so like they couldn't even allow her to be put in peril. Like they right. couldn't have her, no. you know, be well, um, you know, threatened by someone. She yeah, had vulnerable. To out and, and she had to make them look stupid and in. in this is this is why I think whenever you go too woke and you go too focused on like just pushing out a certain message and narrative, the writers kind of put themselves in a diff difficult situation now because now when you have perpetual victims like how they want us to see women, uh, it's harder for them to write for a woman because they can't break that narrative. But then also you're going to have an unlikable character because at the root of it, you see a lot of entitlement and mm. who are the most unlikable people in the world? People who are women. entitled um, <laughs> women, <laughs> entitled white women. Yeah. That's I right. didn't so, say that. You said that. <laughs> so uh, when you have a situation where it's like, okay, here's the character, you know, her life sucks because of everything she has to go through as a woman. And she hasn't had to overcome the odds being against her and, and to shrug it off and to push forward. Anyway, look at, you know, anime does this exceptionally well. When you look at my mm. hero academia, for example, you got Deku who was born with, he didn't get a quirk. He didn't, you know, go through puberty and get his own superpowers like everybody else, but you never saw a moment where he felt entitled to that. He was bummed about it, but he, he, you know, got the cards that he was dealt and he was going to work through that anyway. And he had heart and he had perseverance. 
And so I, whenever you have characters who are just entitled to stuff and just entitled and, and, and put in a position like that to where they're not even trying to overcome anything and they're just going to complain about it, uh, then, yeah, you have yourself an unlikable character. <laughs> You do. And M Melanie, I have to say, like, to, in this episode, like, number the, the episode number two, which really was number two, my God. Right. Uh, <laughs> this, this was shit. Uh, one of the lines that pissed me off to no end. I actually, like, wrote it down because I was like, are you fucking kidding me? When that, when the, the white dude was like, oh, how'd you get these powers? And she was like, oh, nepotism. Uh, and then she's like, and he's like, oh, there's a hot chick over there. I'm going to go talk to it. Oh, no. But there was another one before that when she's like, um, when she's like, oh, uh, it's so dumb. I can't even exist without being a derivative of the Hulk. Bro, like, that's a yeah. pretty you know dumb name, was too. Funny I was like, that to me Ugh. is it's like, she's like, she Hulk, I'm a derivative of a man. It's like, woman, well, <laughs> we already it's like, like girl. Girl. In first. <laughs> If, if the she hulk came first then the guy hulk would be called he hulk you know right so she, she, didn't come she literally is derivative she took his blood <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it's this, just... was a, this was another thing i was going to pick up on as well it's like you know how much more impact would it have had if jen had been the one who'd been injured in that car crash and mm -hmm. you know she's at death's door there's nothing more that uh, the doctors can do for her and bruce is faced with a difficult choice it's like i can inject her with the the hulk blood basically and it will right. cure her injuries at the cost of she's going to lose her humanity and it's going to change her life forever. That's um, right. It, it that would have had dies. a lot more impact. And then, yeah, you, it opens up a lot of interesting character um, options for the two of them together, like their relationship. You know, you've, you've fucked up my life forever. And, you know, he can be like, well, it was either that or you literally died. And I was faced with an impossible choice. That would all be great stuff. You could do a lot with that. Instead, it's like, no. He has to be the one that gets hurt. Of course, she has to rescue mm -hmm. him and carry him out of the wreckage, even though he weighs like Even before pounds. she was a hog, she lifted yeah. the fucking door hinge off. I was like, are you? Yeah. Like, like getting a door open that's buckled on a car, like that's not the sort of thing a human can do, but no. yeah. Fine. And then um, people say that was adrenaline drinker, and I'm like, uh... I, I mean, know. adrenaline's yeah. great, but it can't turn you into a fucking superhuman. It was pretty unbelievable. <laughs> right. Like, I can't even sync my my uh, my Bluetooth on my own car by myself. So it's like I had a hard time believing, like, oh, she can just unbuckle and carry this guy out. <laughs> but, oh, be that as it may, it's it's like the whole premise behind it, though, is like it, you couldn't even give him that. You couldn't even give him that right. choice. It had to be her, and it had to be the stupid scenario where she cuts her fucking arm on the door and then she like carries him out and he's got a cut and his blood gets into hers and like you know she gets hulk aids or something and like that's enough to turn her into like she hulk Hulky it, it's pops. just mm. it's so contrived and it's just like you could have done this so many more like more interesting ways but again it's like you couldn't have her be vulnerable even for a second mm -hmm. and his okay. help Jump in from episode one and two, which is fine, by the way. But I was just going to say, it's non-stop in episode one. Because uh, once you try and like reconcile, like, oh, they're having her say this, do this, these things are happening. You're like, how is, how is Bruce's characterization anyway? It's just like, they keep showing him getting jealous and angry that she's better than him. Which is like, yeah. first of all, why is she so much better than him and everything? But secondly, why are you making mm -hmm. Bruce fucking Banner, one of the most like humble scientists in the history of everything, become this jealous little asshole? When in mm -hmm. reality, it's always missed opportunities. Imagine with every time she succeeds, she's looking for gratification, like, haha, I'm better than you. And she doesn't get, like, any fight out of him. He's like, this is amazing. It's amazing mm -hmm. you've got this kind of control. I'm so happy for you. And eventually, like, we can have a payoff where he's really depressed because he realizes, mm -hmm. like, I had it wasn't like that for me. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. and you can you actually can have them, like, can... connect over it. You could do it so many different ways. You could have her, like, you could have him, you know, operate at, like, you know, ten percent capacity just to give her a chance, and like you know, she thinks she's like doing better than him, and he just kind of shows Let her, her like, win. Uh, yeah, and like at some point she pisses him off, and he's like, "Well, this is what I can actually do," and like you know, just completely annihilates her because like he's had so much more time to get used to this stuff, and he is mm -hmm. considerably larger than her. All that stuff would be fine, but again, the writers won't allow that to happen. It's like it she has be, to be yeah, shown would, he has equal and everything. Right it would off be more. Back believable if she was better at like inherently female strength feminine like, that's stuff. why it's, yeah right it's like really she's stronger than him okay like you mm -hmm. i was they lost me there at that but i've had something to do with Chrissy perception. Is stronger than him now 
Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, Mahler, did you see how in the, like the last clip where she was holding the car up? I was like, that's kind of what I expected the Hulk to do. Like, I expected him to just mm-hmm. put his finger on the tr- like the, the Jeep as it's like heading towards it, and it like just goes like doof, like it can't, well, it can't move. You well, know, you saw, like you saw Avengers, like when when he punches yeah. that fucking like flying whale thing that must yeah. weigh like a thousand Hulk. tons and just stops it dead. Dude, that's becoming like more and more popular as the days go by because people go look at clips of it and they're like, oh man, Hulk smash when he's just fucking wrecking shit and raging. See, oh, I, I, man. I love the Everybody idea. That. You know, I, I love this idea of like the Hulk is is this terrifying force. And they, yeah. they did it in the Avengers where it's like Natasha goes to recruit Bruce and mm-hmm. you know, she's already been built up as this awesome character, but then you get that moment where he, he shows a bit of temper with her and she draws a gun on him immediately. And mm-hmm. you can see that even Black Widow is rattled by him. She's scared, terrified. Right. That was it's such a great good scene. It doesn't it's diminish her, but it builds thinking. up him. You know, yeah, and he's not even moved me. by the gun at all. He's not. He knows what a gun means. Nothing. Well, yeah, it's nothing. just going to turn him into the Hulk. Like it's not going to do anything to him. But then, like that's great. But it's like every movie since then has gradually diminished the the, the Hulk and the danger yeah. that he poses. Dude, and Thanos then, killed him when Thanos knocked him yeah. out in that fight. Yeah. He died. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, was that was it. Fucking lame. I, I heard a really good um, point that someone made where it's like the, the whole reason he's he gets his arm injured and stuff is that so he can't take part in the, the that finale. With the, you know, all that stuff that Captain Marvel does where she flies in and just blows mm-hmm. up a bunch of starships mm-hmm. and stuff. That was meant to be the Hulk originally. Um, but they had to make room for her to have her hero moment. Wow. And so, well, wow. okay, he fuck up his arm so he can't do that stuff anymore. And yeah. Oh, oh my yeah, God. so the concept out with like because there was there was originally there's obviously a fucking arc where Drax was supposed to fight Thanos. This this was meant to be the Hulk's, as well. This was meant to be the Hulk's redemption arc because he was yeah. like basically hiding since he got his ass kicked by Thanos, and then it was mm-hmm. meant to be fucking Hulk's up big time. Um Which is what destroys all of us <laughs> destroys Thanos' entire battle fleet, and it's like that's his vengeance. Like, yeah, fuck you, you prick. Like I, I would just have liked to your have entire seen... army. Hulk, like, take one of Doctor Strange's, like, time holes and, like, just, like, stretch it out and be like, rah. Yeah. 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 Is that what it's called? Time hole? I'm sure there's a technical time term. hole. I like the term time hole. Yeah. yeah. I like it I a just, lot. I think all nerds call it a portal. Oh, right, of course. Yeah. God, Molly, do you have to get technical? I know, you and your physics more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every um, really. jargon. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one more line in episode two that was just fucking cringe as shit because we're talking about the Avengers and they of course they bring up the Avengers because they have to knock oh, the Avengers down right and there was a line that goes do the Avengers offer pension and maternity leave or do uh, they do, do they get paid and I was like okay listen lady can you even get pregnant like <laughs> I mean, you're old as shit now <laughs> yeah. you're, you're radiated like, now is that a real concern because I we, would be like yeah. I mean that's something I would have asked Bruce like can right. I get pregnant now. Like, like is that is right. that something that you know that's a, that's of a concern? No, it's for funny a woman. though. So fuck it. It's all funny. Right. It's if funny her metabolism her can process way alcohol way better, and it takes a lot more, it's like is she gonna need how many loads does she need to get pregnant? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Processing them too quickly. Uh, I think at the end of the like, day, what if, uh, you know, what if she hulks up like mid sex? Like what what would that do to a man? <laughs> Like, oh, oh I guess we're gonna find out. Maybe I don't know. You know but what's he, funny is it's just it. like isn't She Hulk supposed to be a lot more lighthearted and stuff like this? So even silly little things like this could be more explored to a certain degree on the show. And what we saw at the end of episode two, which I actually thought was pretty cute, was seeing her help her her dad out with the household stuff. You know, carrying around the TV, mounting the TV, stuff like that. I would like to see more lighthearted stuff. And that's one thing that really sets like She-Hulk apart from regular Hulk is, you know, with Bruce, you've got like this um, internal struggle with himself, like a battle against himself and a very tragic story. Um, PTSD, all this sort of thing that he's battling with and struggling with. And what sets She-Hulk apart is that you know, she's living her her life and is it's just a lot more lighthearted of a story. And so they hmm. should have capitalized on that, in my opinion. And if they went more with the tone that we saw at the end of episode two with the the cute stuff, like, oh, OK, here she is helping her family, like, uh, you know, set up the TV and move boxes and this and that. That was a fun, lighthearted moment. But what we have here is a character who is supposed to be more lighthearted with She-Hulk, but you 
you have her portrayed in such a ridiculously too serious kind of way where it's almost like she reminds me of like uh, past jobs I've had of the boss that doesn't let anything slide. That's just mm. by the book, by everything, mm -hmm. so serious. And it just completely contradicts the character and what could have been so great about her. Well, yeah. and, and with regards to the family scene too, like, first of all, I was surprised that they actually gave her a nuclear family. I was expecting right. her to go home to like two lesbian moms. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, like but I did notice. America Chavez in her wrong <laughs> But I did notice that she had like I, I think that was a brother, um, like the the stoner weird brother yeah. that's like you know basically a deadbeat. Like I mean, he's not really a deadbeat because he he just gotten a promotion to Best Buy, yeah, which is manager. which is a good job. He got a manager job, but he still like kind of seemed like very aloof and like just in mm -hmm. comparison, like all the male characters are like either a dude, bro. They're oaks. Yeah. They're oaks. Yeah. They're all just there for comedic relief. I mean, I was surprised at the father a little bit because the father seemed like genuine and loving. Right. And, uh, that was a surprise. Like, I was like, okay, well, at least she's got a dad. Yeah, that's like, she shouldn't dad. hate men as much as she does if this is her dad. Exactly, like, nice Chissy, That's what I was wondering. Because like, I was like, you, um, yeah. Do you notice how chopped to hell that scene was? The the family like dinner scene. It's just all over the place. It starts out. It's like yeah. she walks in and in moments like, so oh. inane, man. I it was like a fucking gray mist just passing by me. Like I couldn't even take <laughs> it. Choppy as fuck. <laughs> Nothing like nobody was responding to each other. It's like oh your waistline. You, you know you gotta watch it. And the dad is like I told everybody you've been fired, so it's fine. And she has like an expression like oh jeez, you know like. Thanks, mm -hmm. Dad. And because yo, you got fired, lol. It's like I told you not to say this. Oh, I told you mm -hmm. to, to stop. Mm -hmm. That's like big news. I got manager at Best Buy, and it's like, wait, wait okay, wait, what? Oh, okay, it's fine. Like we're doing that now. Play. I don't know if we yeah. we cut yeah. that. And it's like good employed and promoted, implying like she getting fired when she saved people's lives. I was just like, what the fuck is happening here? Is everybody actually ashamed of her for saving people's lives? What's going yeah. on? And then, like, before you have time for that, it's like, oh, by the way, I gave a random guy your number because he's thinking of trying to become a superhero. Oh, my God. I... Advice. Like, what, that line. What? I was like, what? And then was before like you can register that, he's like, by the way, Hawkeye, does he pick up his arrows? It's like, what? nobody's listening to each other here. Like, yeah. Everyone's just saying shit. And it, it's just like, you, you're... <laughs> fucking hell, your daughter's become a green monster that that can, like, you know potentially destroy entire cities like don't you have questions for her specifically <laughs> yeah is none of this amazing to you like do you have do you understand the gravity of what's happening here yeah. or is it just like nah, no, 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 like, no because they said we we already have a hulk in the family so we don't really have any questions at least you uh, didn't fucking kill everybody so that's fine <laughs> yeah. like, what? i wish i could be this blasé about shit like that happening <laughs> like i mean <laughs> God. Like it's at bizarre. least you didn't smash an entire city. Like okay, oh all right. Probably. I did. I did think that yeah. line though, Mahler, about the mom getting like giving her number out to some oh, rando. Nice. That was a little realistic, especially for like moms that are it's really not, no, it's not trying to it's, get her married. It's yeah. not yeah. Any yeah. one of the lines were unrealistic. It was just that no, it felt like a bigger conversation happened, and they chopped it all the way down. They cut out right. all the bridges, and so everyone's just saying things right. instead of any. Yeah. It doesn't feel like an actual conversation anybody's having because it ends with them just being like, "By the way, Jenny, you need to work on your hair," and she's like, "Oh." I was like, See, yeah, I get it. All the family members keep saying things that are like fucking microaggressions. It reminds me of my family, this, to be honest. Is, yeah, this one, is wait, the wait, thing, wait, right? one, of the, one of the last things from this, though, because I only noticed this because of the subtitles. I could barely hear this in the actual episode, but I was watching it with friends, and we were like, wait, what the fuck? As the camera slowly pans toward her, as everyone's just speaking over and speaking in general. I was like, Ugh. one of them say, Bruce is actually the one who saved billions of people with a snap of his fingers. As, as if to imply, like... Dead? I didn't hear yeah, that. Yeah, as if to imply that they hold that over her, that Bruce saved a whole yeah, bunch it's like, of people. You, you haven't saved half the universe. <laughs> what are you doing I, with your life? You when just you have such a shitty jury. dialogue writer, I don't know what they're trying to tell me. It's like, wait, you, do they hold that over her? Is that something you're, you're trying to say? Because that's fucking stupid. <laughs> this is, but I this think is, they also gonna... said at some point, oh, well, Bruce destroyed a whole city or something. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. the dad said that. Which is How really awkward feel? because he was mind controlled when he did that. Right. So it's, it's, it's like was it even ah, him? I, just I feel like they've all forgotten all the context for all this shit. Whenever they talk about it. Also, they, like in the like in that scene with the Hulk when she calls him, 
And then he's like, yeah, like, great, good luck, whatever. And then he, like, leaves in the spaceship. I was like, wait, is that the spaceship from the first episode? Like, yeah, I was so confused. It's, like, it's the same, Yeah, it's the same design, so I assume it's the same one. That, so that, is, that conversation, actually, is the only one that raised a tiny smile for me, where it's like they're, they're talking about um, Abomination and yeah. the fight we had back in the original Hulk. And uh, Bruce is like, oh, it was so long ago. I'm literally a different man now. And I was mm -hmm. like, ah, okay, I see what you're doing there. I want to see what your <laughs> tiny smile looks like. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least they admit yeah. he's a completely different person at this point. It's just true. I mean, yeah, it's fucking hell. Like, some, someone pointed out, right, and um, I, I think his name's like Little Platoon or something, like he's another YouTuber, and um, he did a really good breakdown video of like the first episode of Hulk. But anyway, one of the points he raised is that Mark Ruffalo is not a good choice as a voice actor because no. he's got a really like flat monotone kind of voice that just sounds kind of weirdly spaced out and it's fine when he's just in human form because it, you can act with his actual face and like mm. that conveys a bit of emotion but like when he's the hulk and he's just got this big rubbery cgi face um it, it doesn't give you anything and so there's this total disconnect between what you see on screen and like what he's saying it's just it's really obvious that he's in a booth somewhere doing the audio mm. for this I never yeah, so, like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, so I can't. I, I, I don't know. I liked him in Avengers. I liked him in Avengers. He's okay. But, um, <laughs> when I was seeing clips of him again in, in like Jay Longbone's review of it, and she was pointing out like, "Good God, his voice acting!" I was starting to really hear. I was like, "What the fuck? His deliveries are awful." Like mm. it really is. I don't know what he's doing. It, it's it's hard to say exactly what he's. It sounds like he's gritting his teeth when he says a lot of his lines. You know, it's like he's talking like this. It's weird. Like. Jen. Yeah, no, yeah no, I no, sure you mean. Wait. Maybe he is Word. because he's a man and he's actually like, exactly. you know, insulted about half the fucking script, but he has to virtue signal every day. So he's like, oh, I'm just going to break my legs and talk Angry and talking. talk like this. I, I don't know what Mark Ruffalo's deal is. I just know that, like, based on his Twitter stuff, like, he's, he's uh, a lunatic. It's hard, it's hard to separate he... the, the actor from the bad takes on Twitter. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm not going to go into it. Gone to war with IMDb. That's just funny. I yeah. know. I I posted that in your in your thread, Drinker. I don't know if you saw it. No, I think I did. Yeah. There's there's a lot of the whole like Skinner from The Simpsons meme where it's like, <laughs> yeah, am I wrong? Is this show terrible? And it's like, no, it's the no, racist play. It's, it's the racist. Oh <laughs> my yeah. God. Um, did you guys see, by the way, when she goes to the bar and she's really despondent and just drinking in the mm. background on the TV, they're playing Ally McBeal. I was like, oh, oh, God. Are they? oh, oh no. Yes. Oh my God. Like, what the fuck okay. bar would be playing episodes of Allie McBeal? No bar. <laughs> no. Because you know what they, 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 they like, oh, it's a great reference because that's a TV show about a lot. It's like, yeah. I, I, I honestly had a, a real like feeling that the, the writing staff basically just wanted to do like a, a fun, you know, observational mm -hmm. comedy show with this. They didn't give a fuck about superheroes or any of that stuff. Yeah. But like this is the only way to make it happen. And so like occasionally they're like, oh fine, I'll put a stupid comic book thing right. in. But like, yeah, what they desperately just want to do is like a modern woman in her thirties doing dating, like trying to balance career and all that stuff. Uh -huh. That's what they're actually interested in. And it's just like the rest of it's just well, stuff they have to do. The problem with that is they didn't even accomplish that well because it's not fun. It's not fun and it's not funny. No, and I'm going to be no honest, light. like the appeal for me was for that reason. Oh, this could be a lighthearted, fun thing that just happens to be in the Marvel Universe, but it should just be, you know, a fun experience, a fun watch, you know, directed, uh, you know, mostly for a female audience. So this would be fun seeing She-Hulk try to date all that. That was the reason why I was... I just needed some mindless fun uh, entertainment. But yeah. it's not fun. It's not fun. I think they they really missed a lot of opportunities to just lighten things up yeah. have a good time make she hulk like you know more bubbly more cute more uh, likable in some kind of way you have loved to see her trying to like she's trying to date and she like is only going for nba players I right. think that would be great and yeah. realistic. It's like a I, certain yeah, a certain size down here. Yeah. I just see her like swiping through the apps, and it's like, okay, well, so maybe she wants to be with like a big, strong guy who can keep up with her, but she just keeps attracting the the short guys who want death by snoo snoo type thing. I think that's coming. <laughs> there could have been some funny things with shame. that, yeah. and that's what I wanted to see. But that's, I think that's coming still. Like, yeah, they, they're, they're gonna it, do that. 
Yeah, they, they, they well, we've got that that dating stuff from the the trailer, so I'm sure there's going to be yeah. something. Yeah, uh, I, uh, about, I, I just, to... I, I without the lightheartedness and without it actually being fun, I don't think they're going to even pull it off. So they're it's not accomplishing anything. No. Yeah, I can, can also say about like you know. <laughs> You know what's great in TV shows where they they work in subtle allegory to to Ooh, things. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. You know what's not great when they fucking hammer you over the head with it with a, yeah. with a sledgehammer. Like yeah. the bit where in episode two she gets basically she gets um, you know recruited into this new legal firm who represent you know superheroes or supervillains whatever. Um, and so she, she's getting shown through the office and she does her monologue to the the camera or to the audience and it's like yeah. Everyone's going to just uh, think that I got hired because I'm She-Hulk. I can't even enjoy this because, you know, nobody will think I earned this job. And it's like, yeah. when I'm qualified. What could that ever possibly be referencing? Uh, well, that, that's well, what I, I mean, was saying, though, with earlier within the bar scene where the, you know, white male boss guy that has to be a fucking dick was like, you know, oh, it's, it's nepotism that got you this job or whatever. And then he, or, and then like later, again, like that line where he's like, oh, there's a hot jig over there. I'm going to go talk to it. I was it, like, right. yeah, he said right it. it. Yeah, he it, said it. Yeah, yeah. Said yeah. It. That bothered which, which, me. I'm going to go talk to I him. I mean, the fact Dude, that, that is downright in that writing for like, a sexist. Like, either, yeah, either that's it's what, like, that's what I, sexists I, do, right? They refer to women as objects, like it. It's like, no, even those womanizing men don't call women it. No. That's like, what yeah. I'm talking about. That, that kind of implies that he's not entirely sure of the gender, but he's willing to go in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and like, hey, fucking hero. I think of him like that. Like, <laughs> he's like, any port in a storm. Anyway. Hi, Anna. Hey, Anna. Hi. Hi, I'm sorry I'm Hello. late. I overslept. Oh, That's okay. Nice. I often oversleep at 10 p.m. <laughs> uh, I, I'm on a vampire schedule, so it's like 6 a.m. Yeah. for me. Right hey, now. me too. Oh, wow. We're all you and me. Yeah, that's cool. We're, we're just uh, we're shooting the breeze about She Hulk, and and I suppose before you, you know, we get fired into this a bit further. Um, what's your take on the show? Do you like it? Do, did it really oh, appeal to you? Uh, I'm actually a She-Hulk fan, so it's absolutely Aww. fucking infuriating what they're doing. I'm, I'm like, so sorry for you. You guys <laughs> were handed a fucking gold mine, and you threw this shit away. So She-Hulk was written by one of the best comic book authors, which is John Byrne. So John Byrne did She-Hulk. He wrote Wonder Woman, and he did like the most famous Superman run, which is Man of Steel. And so. They literally had this thing that was so great. And now they did this like, oh, my God, like my blood was boiling when I watched the first episode. And I don't know if you guys mentioned this, but, you know, the first scene in the beginning where she's giving like her closing argument and then the intern chick and then the other dude is there and he's like, oh, I really think that it should be coming from me. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen anyone else talk about this, but when it goes to the end scene, where, you know, when she kind of hulks out and whatnot. Well, the other lawyer that's giving his closing argument, the argument is about how, like, a man was doing something to protect his business. And I'm like, oh, my God, the dude had a fucking point. This would have been so much stronger if it was a dude going up against another dude being like, that guy's trying to play off, like, this is what the dude had to do to be a man. No, fuck that. That's not how men are. But instead, they're like, no, let's have the whammon do it because virtue signal because she's the whammon. It's Wait, like, uh, it, it always like, seemed like yeah. such a sketchy like case that he was trying to argue because it seemed like the, the crux of his argument seemed to be like, oh, yeah, so, so a whole bunch of people died, but like our business owner was just trying to do do it to protect his company, so it's okay. It's like, yeah. are you trying to defend murder or something? Like, what the fuck is this case even meant to be? Well, I think that I, villain's I, gonna be coming back. Oh, so definitely. She's like a yeah. main cast member, apparently, but I, I was still not, just not baffled. The, chick, that it, the, the person that they were arguing about in court. Oh, maybe. I don't know. But oh. I was going to say, I was distracted from any of that by the fact that she requested to give her closing argument after the jury was just fucking ex almost killed by someone bursting into the room through like, any lawyer yeah. worth this salt would be like so they're gonna gun for mistrial this is fucked. yeah they mm. made Which, Jen um, a lot dumber why did that woman burst into the room anyway like if she we'll was find out, drink if she was a defendant Fine. wasn't she trying to like leave the court building instead of like burst into other court well and it's weird because she bursts in there and then she goes who are you it's like hey, you're the one that made the interest <laughs> 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 Well, to be fair, she became greed at that point. I think most people would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why is there a It's on par with that, that, for, that Darth Vader thing with, uh, with Obi-Wan. Oh, it's yeah. like, ah, so you've come to kill me. <laughs> it's like, you fucking came after me. 
That pod's fucking brilliant. I would like to see a shopping montage of She Hulk trying to like find stuff in a bigger size, or she's getting like she's getting right. box extenders for everything. Exactly. Like, I, I, why are we not seeing this? I was gonna say yet? right because mm-hmm. I know like in the comics it's it's a little bit raunchy and stuff, and there's times when like she's like skipping rope in the nude, and she's like, oh, can you believe what I have to do to sell comic books? <laughs> really? But, like, oh my yeah, god. That's, that's, no, like, she's like, got like funny. Like, the rope, so like, kind of whooping by is just covering up the, the important bits, you know. But, well, that's like, I know a lot of times she's just in like the spandex, like, onesie suit because she can. I was like, gonna say, like, there's never gonna be a time suit. where like her clothes rip off or whatever and she has to cover herself up and, like, yeah, you know, why you are there no tits flapping out? Really? You're that's not, not happening. That, even once. It's never, Do you really want to see that chick's tits, though? I mean, I would not want to see mine. I wouldn't mind at all. No, why not? Let's see them all, you know? I just why think not? in real life, they're going to rip in places you can't predict. But it's, it's assume yeah, even. Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? I missed I'm it. going to be taking biology soon. It's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, she's like, so when Jen becomes She Hulk, she's like ultra confident. So that's why she always mm-hmm. stays in the She Hulk form. So she doesn't care if people see her naked because she's like, I look hot as fuck. So. You know, yeah. and she does I, I, bang dudes all the time. She bangs Hercules wait. all the fucking time. <gasps> Let's oh, see so that. Is that I want to see I was that. Say, when, when do we get that show? <laughs> <laughs> well, when they finally cast a, a dude that can play Hercules, so I don't know if they will do. That. I will well, we, say we, this: we Anna, at I, the end of like Thor: Love and Thunder, didn't we? That was Hercules. That guy might right. be fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't watch that. He just kind of looked like a generic Ooh. bodybuilder guy, but you know. We'll Anna, see. I did read that issue of She-Hulk that you suggested, and that yeah. was magnificent. And it really, whenever you read stuff like that, it actually makes me more upset because I'm like, really this? Like, this is the literal blueprint of what you could have done with this I show, know. and you I didn't. Know. Like, how do, how do you do something like that? How do you shit on something so hard and then expect people to be like, yeah, this is fucking amazing, uh, like you know, Mark Ruffalo is doing right now on Twitter. It's 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 just it, it's crazy to me. It's bonkers. Why aren't you liking the slop that we dish up for <laughs> yeah. you, peasants? I I have a question for you all. How do you think it would go down in real life if there was a story about a woman who burst into a jury room to kill everyone, and this lady revealed that she was a superhero and saved all of their lives, and then her office fired her for being a liability? <laughs> oh, how, how do you think the, the world would take that information? Or? Yeah, <laughs> in today's day and age, very differently. It would be I a mean, bigger it, deal. That was just, that was an interesting choice. These, there I couldn't be believe it. Like everyone's like, "Can't yeah. hire you." But you're, you're too distracting I, in the courtroom. Yeah, there's never been a lawyer that was like high profile. That's just never happened. Yeah, I would like <laughs> yeah. Maybe, like maybe a two week period where she doesn't know what to do. She starts an OnlyFans. She comes to her senses. She's like, I have I, I, you know, I timed it though. Like there, there's a gap of six minutes between her getting fired and then getting rehired by the new yeah. company. Six minutes yeah. of screen time where she's unemployed. Like she's that's how sad. fucking quick this show this has to be. It's like they, they show, nothing they show fucking matters. The dumb <laughs> thing. Is, she's a lawyer. She can start her own law firm. Like she doesn't she have to have an things. office that she works at. She can I'm start sorry, her I, own. I, I just don't yeah. believe it. I don't believe that the firm would have the balls to fire a woman who just saved everyone's lives for right. that reason. Remember, he's point. like, you saved their lives, so they managed to get the mistrial. As if the fact that the table would landing on the jury wouldn't have fucking caused a mistrial anyway. Like, what, <laughs> what difference does it make? And he's like, well, now that you gave him the opportunity for the mistrial, you're at fault. You're the liability. That logic doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Like, well, of course, and she even their says, logic she is make men bad. Yep. Well, of course. That's their logic. She, That's what the show gives is. him the, the Man of Steel question. What should yeah. I do? Let him die? He yeah. doesn't say maybe. <laughs> maybe but, <laughs> and to Anna's does, point, like... He doesn't say oh, she just get it fired. It's, it's absolute bullshit. It's a shitty plot point to, just to get us to the next step. To Anna's point of like, you have a template of a good story that you can follow that would be a success. It's like, it's. I think it ultimately comes down to selfishness and wanting to kind of like rewrite history in a way. It's like, how, oh, how can we kind of like break this down and reform it in what we want? You know, you know what it feels like? I, I, said, I predicted this when I saw the trailers and it's for so far, it's exactly come true. This entire show is just like a multi-million dollar coping session for the writers because yeah. I, I, what, yeah, what you're much. seeing here is like what they wish they had been able to do in their own lives like um the the, the scene oh, right at the yeah. beginning where she gives her closing arguments she's rehearsing in front of her or um you know her 
co-workers and the guy questions her and she's like yeah fuck off you're out of here and he just gets sent out the room like that's without a doubt something like that has happened to one of these writers before but they didn't mm -hmm. stand up yeah. for themselves it's like success they wish LARPing. They mm -hmm. exactly yeah like the same mm -hmm. bit where, where the guys try and hit her on her hit on her outside the bar they're a little bit too forward um, and she hulks out and she's well, about to fucking that's not even how men act in Mexico. That, you really want to no. see creepy guys? Go to fucking Tijuana at night that, and that, see how it. long like, you last. They, I, the I live even here. Commit to making them properly threatening. They're just no, like, they were, they were nice. I'm like, they're, you're in Mexico and they're that clean? Like, what is, they're probably nice tourists. Like, but, Nina, I kept, why again, are you not like, wearing probably, an I Heart yeah. Mexico shirt, Nina? <laughs> I want one line. of those. I want one of those shirts because I yeah. do yeah. Heart Mexico and I live here. And you know what? I've actually experienced like, like 20 mexican dudes just following me around uh with my girlfriend Lucky. Uh, but the only reason it happened though was because my girlfriend was hot and she was blonde and white uh and they love that look they don't love my look because i look like every other spanish look so a uh, girl so i don't get the crazy cat calls but this girl so i was with her and we were at the beach and we we're going to the bathroom together and this like all these guys just start following us to the bathroom but they all kept their like distance at a very respectable way they were just following us and telling this us starting we're to hot. sound like taken nina it was so funny <laughs> though it was the funniest th like scene that i've ever seen because they were in a respectable distance but they just kept following us and being like Mama they're like Cita, respectable so stalkers <laughs> yeah and i was just like well at least they're like not being creepy to come and touch us or something it was just like no, it was like being she a die star. if she punched them. Well, oh my th god! This, this is the thing, right? This is the point I was making. There is like what uh, this is probably something. Some variation of this has probably happened to the writers at some point where right. they've been given shit by men outside a bar, mm -hmm. and they probably yeah. wished that they had stood up for themselves and been like, "Yeah, fuck mm -hmm. you, you pricks." What they probably did was slink away and like you know feel mad about it for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. And this is their therapy. This is like right. this is what they wish they had done. Right, um, they're not looking at the themselves whole... like, but oh, I, I shouldn't mean, have yeah, gotten they're... too drunk and stayed around until 2 a.m. to the cleanup crew. And then, of course, all those creepy guys that are looking around when the bar is closing. It's like you're not looking at the decisions you make. You're like, how can I just be the victim and be like, no, it's all the man's fault. Yeah, but, but the, I question I mean, like, that, the whole, though, the whole show is just like about them. Like, It's almost like wish fulfillment. It's not about the, the actual right. audience or telling a good story. It's about like the writers just validating themselves That's I, I question point. that though that experience thing drinker because i'm telling you no woman if they've ever been freaked out about guys or something that's happened to them would go to the bathroom and then have a bunch of women show up and then like just put makeup on you and then tell you to go fuck yourself like by yourself like somewhere <laughs> no. else it's just not realistic it's not <laughs> I, something yeah. that would ever <laughs> happen I, love, I tell you what though right i love the idea of like if i'm if I, like walk into a bathroom i'm covered in like mud and shit because like i've just woken up somewhere it's like instead of washing i'm just gonna put makeup on to cover it up <laughs> <laughs> there are some girls um, that are that stupid, but also like, what girl well, is going to give you a pair of video. shoes and a jacket? Like, no, right. that's the most unrealistic yeah, yeah. part of okay, it. So it's so is, triggering. This what happens this, in the bathroom no, with yeah, women? Call me, it's like call it me never crazy, like, that. Right? like the call whole, me crazy, yeah. right? If 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 I was a woman and I saw another woman in a bathroom, like she was clearly like like looked like she'd been attacked and she was like her clothes were all torn, hair was messed up, she was covered in mud and shit. I'd be like, all right, I need to get the cops in here. Call like, the police. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, exactly. you, don't need, you don't need a makeover. You need, like, police attention because something well, so, bad has really happened to you. Uh, Jay Longbone's video, she she put together that she, she theorizes that they probably wrote the scene where she was, quote-unquote, harassed by the people mm -hmm. asking to go out first. And then they were like, wait, this doesn't really make sense, right? Because if you had her covered in blood and torn clothing, you'd have to be a pretty shitty guy to be like, hey, sexy. You want to <laughs> So they were like, oh, we've never been to, to a Scottish it. nightclub more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, uh, Jay Logan's argument was like, Disney would probably even be like, oh, this is a bit awkward. We, we need to justify it a bit better. And so that's why they gave this absurd nonsense makeover scene so that she's facing their back to them. So all they can see is her hair and the coat. Mm -hmm. So they don't see the blood. They don't see the torn. So they don't see the expression. So they can just be like, hey, baby. Which again, Disney writers are hilarious to me because they did it in Captain Marvel. What was the Don's biggest sin? He touched her map. 
He was too beautiful for this world. <laughs> he was, that was, too <laughs> that he was nice to her. That was his they problem. Don't, they don't correctly have him cross the line. You need her to be like, you know, I'm not interested. And then they grab her hand and pull it back. And right. Like, hey, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. Something that's properly when you can threatened. get a slap. You can get a punt. You can even have her slap them, and then they grab it like, hey, right. fuck you. And then she's she's got the right to punch. Go ahead. You know? Um well, I think, too, with this show is what they've done right out the gate is just bombard you with so many instances of, oh, these are things women go through that to the point to where it's too much to even absorb to where it just feels like a bunch of pandering. Because let's face it, some of these things do happen sometimes. There's yeah. there's plenty of valid instances where, yeah, we are scared to walk outside at night, you know, things like that. There are plenty of value, uh, valid situations where that happens. But the problem is whenever you shoehorn as many yeah. of these of these incidences all at once like that, then it doesn't come across as genuine. And if anything, it it, it makes these it actual valid it. instances less serious to where mm -hmm. people aren't going to take it as serious anymore. Well, you know what it reminds me? It reminds me of, like, yeah. have you guys ever seen that where an AI writes a script on how they think humans interact? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It feels like they gave it, like, points. Like, her getting catcalled, her this, 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 and this, and an AI wrote the script. I shit, I shit you not, man. That is, like, 90% of Marvel now. It's just, it like, really AI is. wrote it. It's, like, no, people that don't have any real-life experiences right. watch, like, writing this stuff. And I'm, like, literally, you own these comics, Go grab the John Byrne run and fucking do it, and you will make millions yeah. upon millions of dollars. You know, you know, part of the problem as well, though, is like a lot of this stuff that we're discussing here, like the idea of uh, guys harassing you to the point where it's like proper threatening um, mm -hmm. stuff. You know, like people are getting slapped around and stuff, and like you know, violence is going to happen here. Like that's pretty dark, serious stuff, right? And but it's it's a complete con. It's a complete you know juxtaposition between that and what they want this show to be which mm -hmm. is just this happy clappy light-hearted comedy where everything's fun and nothing really matters but like you're choosing as the writers of this show to try and tackle stuff like this but you're doing it in this like comically right. light-hearted right. way yeah you're it's fucking making the rod money. for your own back yeah like you're you're kind of like trying to do things that are it's just completely really in smart. conflict with each other <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. It's just like you don't have the writing skill to be able to marry those two things together. So what mm -hmm. you get is this stupid halfway house where nothing has any weight behind it, and so characters' actions seem completely out of proportion to what they're actually up against. And I think that what gets to me the most, and this is the, this has just been a pattern now. And like, I mean, Mahler, we talk about this all the time on the Real BBC, but it's just this. It's this pattern now with the MCU where it's like this constant. Let's put down the male characters in order to lift the women characters. And I'm mm -hmm. sick of this, this blueprint that they're following. I hate it. I can't stand the Hulk being a joke. I can't stand Thor being a joke. It's just every single male character is a joke all the time. And I like, mm -hmm. and it's just, they're evil. They're bad. Oh, like that last, ep like the first episode, it's like the whole Captain America, like, you know, being a virgin thing. Like, it's so disrespectful, yeah. Yeah. so fucking retarded. Hey, like, I'm just like, you, uh, why? Uh, yeah, like of all the guys to go me. after, fucking Steve Rogers, like probably like <laughs> the most altruistic. Yeah, but yet again, like, well, did you spot fair, on your out phone? Out of all the Avengers, <laughs> he's the only one who had dick pics leaked, so... Uh, that's, that's true. Well, so, yeah, have that on top of the fact America's that um, dick. her screensaver on her phone. Did any of you see it? She has Captain America's ass on her screensaver. Oh no. really? No, I didn't and see I was, that. I was like, imagine any male character at Black Widow's ass as this screensaver. Imagine. Very funny. <laughs> It'd be great. I, well, yeah, I, I hate this like because a lot of the time, like if you bring this stuff up, their their justification is pretty much, well, we had to go through this for decades in Hollywood. Now you so, guys got to do it. As if, yeah, as it's if like it's your turn. Done that with bed forever anyway. Well, the, the, you know, you Anna, you fucking did a, a perfect tweet about this um, the other day where it was like you oh, showed yeah. all the shirtless guys who are like, they must have killed themselves in the gym for months to get mm -hmm. in that kind of shape. And it's like, it's all for those money jobs. For she -Hulk. And it's you like, know, do you not see what the men do the second yeah, they find that there's a job? All Rudd is yep, in his yeah. 50s. Never in his life did he have a six pack until he started playing Ant Man in his fucking 50s. So give me a fucking break. Oh my God, you have to play She Hulk and work out. Like, Melody does that every single day for <laughs> yeah. free. Yeah. yeah. Most yeah. men do that. I mean, better for free over here. 
here. Robert Pattinson didn't do that for the Batman, and I'm very you know, disappointed in that. Because when he's shirt, like the entire time he's got his shirt on, it's like, okay, maybe he has muscle. He's like one of those like lean type of dudes. Then when he's fighting and he's hanging from the thing, I'm like, all right, that suit, like you're probably, I don't know how guys weigh, like maybe 185 at minimum. I think it's if they're, if they're like six foot tall, they'll be about 185. Yeah. Okay. So minimum he's 185. And then he's got like a hundred pounds of armor and like weapons on him. And he just got shot. And you're telling me this bitch is hanging with one hand. <laughs> all of that. I'm like, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a very strong person, but I'm pretty sure like he doesn't work out enough to be able to hold all of that weight after getting shot. Like you'd have to be fucking yoked out of your mind to do that mm-hmm. after and just he was shot not. just with a shotgun. Give it, me it's a kind point. of a weird That's one a because they, they, they do <laughs> scenes with him where he's shirtless and they, they, they kind of play every trick in the book to try and make him look bigger. Like they shoot yeah. him from behind. Yeah. And he, like he he put, like, honestly, he does this highlight. whole thing where it's like he's trying yeah. to get his traps uh, to be as big as possible. And it's like, yeah, we're not buying it, man. Like no, you're not, no. you're not big. The trap shaming. Yeah, but, <laughs> Sorry. but most of the Marvel, no, the Marvel dudes out. do it. They they do. You work know what? Right. At least give this to Brie Larson. She did work out. You know, she I think, did. She, I think she might have like overworked out. Like I think no, dude. She went was, vegan and now she's like fucking needs to eat, dude. Right. Uh, right. Is it, like, I saw that. I saw that little away. cameo that she did in Ms. Marvel, and I was like, damn, you're you're not. Yeah, there's not yeah, much of looks, you left. Like you look ill in, in her own movie. Yeah, she's um. She lost a lot of weight. Drinker, like, you lo- you it? watched Mar- the Miss Marvel nah. show? I no, watched I, the first I, episode with Az because he forced me to do it because he's a <laughs> dick. And, uh, <laughs> and I just think like, nothing happened. And so I was like, nah, I don't want to watch any more of this. Didn't you, didn't you force him it. to play all of The Last of Us 2? I did, yeah. That's you true. are much worse than him. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that that is right. way crueler. He, he made a fortune out of that, doing live streams and stuff. So I can't blame <laughs> him, you know? But yeah, yeah he, he did actually. <laughs> we were supposed to do a live stream about it that night, and he, he messaged me like an hour beforehand, and he's like, "I'm at such and such a point in the game. How much fucking further do I have to play this?" <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> They're doing a live action movie of that now. Yeah, or a TV show. I think I saw on HBO Max like a trailer for we'll it already. See how that goes. There's a trailer already. I didn't know. Well, that. No, I watched uh, the the Game of Thrones thing. Like my friend gave me their HBO Max login, and so Ooh. it made me watch all these trailers for shows before. And one of them was with Pedro Pascal and some random chick, and they look like they were in a dystopian world. Is that not the trailer? I think that's yeah. it. That, that's that's the one, yeah. sounds like that it. That sounds like it. And the chick looks nothing like Ellie. I think they got, like... Well, yeah, neither yeah. does Pedro Pascal look yeah, like Joel. It's like... Mm-hmm. It's like <laughs> I don't understand the, the casting at all. Whatever ethnicity he is. He's not Mexican, is he? Where is he from? He is... Sure. Is he Puerto Rican? I don't think he's Puerto Rican. He definitely uh, doesn't look like Joel. That's all I know. Yeah. yeah. Not working. Well, it's not look anything working. like Ellie. So it's like the. Um, yeah. Wasn't she designed originally on uh, like Ellen Page, though? I don't. I, I Ellen think Page so. no longer she, exists. How scary you dead name. Elliot oh, Page. Yeah. She's still well, that. But she was system. based on Ellen and not Elliot. So I'm, I'm actually. Well, I know there was like some controversy <laughs> with that, but then they were uh, Naughty Dog was saying, no, she's based off the voice actress that we had for her and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, I mean, honestly, there's an absolute rabbit hole that probably Muller and I could both go down with uh, with Last of Us versus Last of Us 2 and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, well, uh, the, uh, the clip we saw, though, of Pedro Pascal looks like he might get the voice down, which is something. Um, mm. it, it didn't that's either. pure it, no, coincidence because he didn't study <laughs> he didn't He's sound Chilean. particularly southern like because joel's like from the south isn't he he's got like a so. pretty pronounced southern accent right like, I th- let's like put it this way i thought it was way better than i was expecting I, right I, I, okay i thought there was like no chance but i was like oh shit okay that's not well, the worst yeah he's got a good voice though in general i mean that's how he got his mandalorian role and all that He's just a dick. I think. But, he- yeah, I don't like him, but he's got a cool voice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's weird because I like you know you want Everyone to, wants to like him. Actor. Yeah, you want to like separate the, the the art from the artist and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But, it's um, getting so difficult, man. I'm like, I, I, I guess it's, it's just. I I'm, think the I'm only done. thing I liked him in was Game of Thrones. Like I liked him in Wonder Woman. I thought he was like the one good part of Wonder Woman. I, I I really liked him in the oh, unbearable weight, massive talent. Like he was. Yeah, I liked him in that as well. I didn't watch it. If you can't tell. 
when they draw bastard and like they're trying to climb over like, the wall like that's fucking brilliant as was mentioned i don't like mandalorian but i actually think he does a pretty good job in it for the script he's got you know he's he's doing what he can i suppose there's some ways that he could deliver better but it's, i it's think strange... he did great in mandalorian people say narcos i haven't seen it have you guys seen narcos I yeah. You're in Mexico. You haven't seen Narcos. Yeah, because I live here, dude. I Is don't want to show about Narcos. Who fall, yeah, it's just daily people life. who fall asleep all the time. It is <laughs> no. 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 That's a very different show. Um, but yeah, like he was pretty good in Narcos. He was just like a, a kind of hard bitten um, DEA agent. You know, mm. not not a huge amount of depth to his character, but I think he played the role pretty well. So yeah, he's all right. You reminded me, by the way, you know when she's doing a little rant about how everyone's going to think she was hired for being She-Hulk and not for her skills? Mm -hmm. I couldn't help yeah. but think to myself, you are being hired because you're She-Hulk. Yeah. That's literally why they're yeah. hiring you. Like, is this a joke about minority hires? Is that what they're yeah, not? And she said, look Females. at those guys. They'll, I know, they're like accidentally based sometimes. Sometimes I mean, they accidentally get like something. <laughs> what is um, this thing that they do now as well? Like, you know, like when that guy came in with the, the welcome basket and he was like the most effeminate Right, you know, just like timid, Again, putting down like, I, I, men. Yes, you know, maybe, oh, maybe he's just... meant to be gay or something. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know the character yet. But um, if the, he's just meant to be a regular dude, it's like no man would would come in with a basket like that. No, like, right. That way. No, no, I feel like you know I've been given this stupid thing to give you by corporate. Here it is. But like you know, I'm, I'll just talk to you like a normal person because mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's how we you do know, with people. Um, how TV tropes like develop. Uh, when because I, I watched uh, episode one with Rags Springy. And you know when when those men popped out of the little bar, literally just the camera swerves. She we, she we see her looking at them, and it's three men. I mm -hmm. as a joke was just like, oh no, men! Like, <laughs> yeah. but like if if say someone who's an alien to to media and the matter and everything was just like, wait, why are you saying that? And she'd be like, oh well, you know, when, when, when you see like, when, when you just you, you're. You know, you know, you might be like, well, what are you trying to explain? It's like, it's the same thing for that guy. When he came in with the welcome basket, I immediately was like, oh, I wonder if this will be like a guy who appears nice when he's going to be like a villainous asshole who backstabs uh -huh. her at some point. And someone might be like, why would you assume that? And it's like, what? Well, <laughs> yeah, men are either we're subservient or they're, or they're tone deaf assholes. Was yep. he gay? Like, is he a gay character? I don't, we don't know. I don't think yeah. he's supposed to be. The man but, holding a basket is but, a, it's a little gay. Everyone's yeah. into monkey pox nowadays, so I don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. He made the basket. He's gay. <laughs> well, right? They they specified. They made sure he specified that he made it and he put everything together, which is uh, they, that's they, kind of gay. I, I gay. think. Normal yeah, school. one of you guys yeah. mentioned it. Like men fall into two categories in Marvel now. It, they're either yep. um, corrupt, evil bastards who, who mm -hmm. need to be taken down, or they are like um, unthreatening, ineffectual, submissive, like. Beat on mail kind of thing. Who, yeah. who, like, uh, they're, they're the guys that were put in the friend zone, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and all the they, good men are being destroyed, like Captain America. Yeah, they like, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. You know, people talk about so much about like, well, I need to see myself represented on screen, and it's like, well, I, you know, there's there's no positive role models that I can think of now to look up to in the MCU. Like every male right. is like broken down in some way, and he has to be deconstructed. Um, and shown to be a little bit stupid and a little bit, uh, yeah, full of himself or whatever. But that that door only ever swings one way. It never happens mm -hmm. to the female characters. Like, could you imagine? You know, if they tried to do that to Captain Marvel, it's like, yeah, you're you're kind of an arrogant dick. Yeah, and you need to be taught humility. Like, <laughs> nah, that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> They're yeah. that, that, that's the thing too. It's it's so funny because they're like, oh, like you know, we got female writers and blah blah blah, but they they can't actually fire write them. for women. So they're doing mm -hmm. fire them. Yeah, <laughs> they can't Transition actually write. Well, women here's at all. here's the thing for me, and I know you know since being like in the content creation space for a while and stuff, and sometimes you work on influencer type projects at different events and stuff with that kind of get you intermingle, and so sometimes I've done uh, projects with. Uh, people who are more into the acting scene uh and i've never met such an unrelatable group of people <laughs> than, <laughs> than actors and so oh, it's like the worst people and so whenever these people who are very enmeshed in hollywood and stuff who are already don't seem human uh they're they're, <laughs> they're trying to create representation for the rest of us and i'm just like i'm sorry i just don't relate to this at all so it's not even accomplishing what it's trying to accomplish mm -hmm. i don't feel represented when i 
when I'm seeing a lot of these tropes on screen at all. <laughs> Well, yeah, because an example, I guess, would be like if they said, you know, don't you hate it when like a man maybe treats you like a piece of meat? And you'd be like, oh, I, right. maybe. Yeah, some scenarios like that. And it's like, yeah, so we're going to write this character who says you're an it. Right. No, I've no, that's, never, that's never actually I mean, happened to me. I've <laughs> met really douchebaggy guys, like really fucking shit. Yeah, they dudes. exist, right. but like they're not written never this heard way. Never, never, I've never, I've never had a dude call me it before. Never. never. I, I've never, yeah, yeah I've, I've never heard a guy clown. refer to women as it. Well, yeah, and, and ever, you're ever. talking about how Unless this is like wish fulfillment. Like super hideous and you the, can't tell. Yeah. Which yeah. could be wish fulfillment for the writers that maybe they went through something like that where they had right. a cackle and they wish they said something back. I'm starting to wonder if they never actually went through it at all and they kind of wish they did get to go through it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's no, what, that's what exactly. Even cat calling is just some kind yeah. of interest. Like, write, that's what they wanted. Write a believable cat call. And yeah, so, yeah because like right. you watch it, it's like, what is it like to be cat called? It's like, oh, that's when they grab you by the yeah. hair and fucking shove you to the ground. Like, no. 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 that no. like, that's no. called sexual assault. Like, what, yeah. what the hell? Like, oh, I, think, I actually you think you're on to something there, actually. this is A guy yeah. whistled at me, and I punched him, and everyone cheered. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> like, I believe you. Like, it also just makes zero sense to me how uh, how a lot of like feminists will try to act in the fact of like stop objectifying women, stop treating women as objects, but then in the same breath they will uh, try to insult Captain America because oh he must have been a virgin and all this. So you want to judge a guy based on how many women he slept with, but then at the same time you want to tell guys not to objectify women. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. well, you can't just say both. Well, <laughs> it's weird. It's almost like. Yeah. Yeah. You know. right? because the whole thing about Captain America and saying like oh is he a virgin or not but you know if they said like oh did uh, Black Widow bang Hulk or did Black Widow bang him in that one movie and then it's like how dare you slut shame da 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 she can have as many women as she wants da 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 and it's like the women that like make this argument it's like do you not see how contradictory it is and the fact that you're giving the double standards for women right. and you're not giving the mm -hmm. same benefit to men and calling him a virgin is like the only thing they can do. Like, mm -hmm. what else can they criticize? Him this for? is this, yeah. This is the equivalent of like you know, like when a, a girl breaks up with a guy and she's like, oh, "I had a really small dick," you know, right. like, <laughs> like the most like base yeah. level insult, right. like the simplest it's thing like I can come up with. You know that when so they wrote long. it, they were like, "Doesn't this sound like normal, genuine dialogue?" A lot of nerds talk about this with the MCU. You guys have always talked about that, right? And you're all just sitting, you're like, "What the fuck are you like, talking no. about?" I, I, yeah, and you're, you're it's trying never to never come up. And you're, you're trying to insult like Steve Rogers, like right. <laughs> probably like the most heroic guy in the whole mcu like started out in nothing became like the you know the most like perfect specimen of human you know evolution that you could be saved the world like multiple times got to bang like peggy carter like one of the hottest women in the she whole mcu not. it's like yeah you're gonna insult him it's like what the fuck have you done with your life like he's like <laughs> His life has been a million times mm -hmm. more fulfilled than yours will ever be. Well, and it's like see, that's the thing is it the people that are writing this, I'm assuming are I land know. whales that haven't gotten laid, I so know. they're obsessed with sex. And so that's why they're like, ooh, like let me write my fan fiction. Did Captain America bang Peggy? Like, I need this for my fan fiction. So let's put it in our show so we can get it canon that he wasn't a virgin. So now I can write all my you know smut fiction yeah. about him Ugh. Like, it, that's what weird. these people it's, are yeah taking him down a peg this is uh, <laughs> a yeah, peg all right probably uh you know something that Maul and i we've discussed before is like writers now it feels like you're dealing with people that have never had any life experience mm -hmm. you know when you, you had writers like 20 30 40 years ago like they generally speaking had lived a fucking life like they had right. probably like gone to like the far flung corners of the world, they'd fought in wars, they they like endured poverty, like whatever it might be, they they'd shaped their character and it given them perspectives on the world that they could like bring into their work. Now you've just got these like pampered, oh yeah, uh, sheltered, like gender study graduate assholes. Like they've never done they've never first faced anything resembling yeah. adversity in their entire lives. And so what do they come up with? It's like you know, I have to, I get cat called, or I have men like explaining things to me that I already know. Well, here's a fucking like secret for you. Like we all have to deal with idiots who think they know more than us explaining mm -hmm. things Absolutely, to yeah. us. Yeah, it, like it's happened to me in my professional career. Like, like it, it's not unique to women or anything. 
isn't it? But like, the, this, this, these are not like things that I consider like defining moments in my life. That right. like, wow, I went through that and I survived. Yeah. And that makes yeah, me a makes stronger person. It's like no, that's just minor annoyances like that I don't normal care about. Experience every day that you get all the time. People thinking they know better than you on something that you know better than them. You know the irony of that scene. The greatest fucking irony. She's ripping into him. About how annoying it is to have some some man tell a woman that they when they know better on the subject. It's like, oh, and what's yeah. the wider subject right now? It's how to deal with being a Hulk, and she's telling Bruce she knows better than yeah. him. Uh, doing it not for only like that, Hulk for over minutes. a decade he controls her anger better than him, and like, bitch, you're his cousin. You know he watched his mom get beaten to death when he was a child. You know his dad experimented on him, and that he has all this trauma throughout his fucking life. That he tried to fucking kill himself and he couldn't. That he was trapped on a planet as a slave for years and you're saying because you get catcalled and men like lecture you about your job that you you know have it harder than him fuck you bitch like give me a break she was I mean, never that it, stupid i wish i just I, that was a moment that would have been a perfect moment in the the scene the script for bruce to be like shut the fuck up you have yes, no clue yeah. what you're talking about. The fuck instead down. he just Jesus sits Christ. there like a fucking out. idiot like just taking it all in like, why? Why couldn't you just, for once, have someone call her out on this crap? Because she's a whammon. You can't call out whammon. Women that can seems do no wrong. Problem. It's like you and can't ever like, just show them to be stupid. Or, or you to, can't, like, get, you can't get credit even. as a woman for controlling your emotions if you're going to be, like, resentful and cunty about it just a little <laughs> bit later on. Like, it's like, well, no, you have not like, have like, control. Why didn't, um, she why turned didn't the bring up right there. Yeah, and why didn't the Hulk bring up the fact that some guy said, hey, you're pretty, and she hulked out and nearly killed them? How is that not an example of her being shit at controlling her emotions? Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. He doesn't bring it up, though, because he's he's not got a brain. Or the, rather, the writers can only write yeah, one. I do. I, 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 love it. I love all the videos yeah, that people have put together of, like, you know, the, the camera just pans in on him when he's sitting there, like, just listening to her, and it's, like, all yeah. the scenes from, like, <laughs> his life where he's like, tried to shoot himself in the fucking head and, like, didn't work, and, like, losing Nat, losing, like, his the love of his life and everything. <laughs> like, just all the things he's been through, and then the she's snap, just babbling the on snap. about, like, being catcalled. Doing Doing the snap crippled him. He didn't even know he could survive it. He wasn't sure, and he did that. And it, oh god, this is what I mean. Everyone's waiting for for Jen to be more sympathetic, to be more understanding. Mm -hmm. It's like fine, we can have it be uh, have these traits, and then to learn from them, we're all okay with that. But you already know this show is validated. Everything she's already said, it's on board. Remember when she said at the, near the end of the episode, "Hey, what you said was harsh, harsh, but true." Yeah. It's already she over. Already <laughs> she, yeah. she ain't going to apologize for that. That's done with. They're moving right along. They, they're really happy with that. You apologize? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. How I dare imagine you? That some people are hoping <laughs> there's going to be an episode crack. where she's like, man, I've learned a lot about being a Hulk. I was wrong about what I said about mm -hmm. you. That's never going to happen. No, <laughs> like, no fucking way. Everybody thinks that's that's what's going to happen. Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, like, this is a build up. Like, you know, they're going to they're gonna make it so that she realizes how wrong she was. About how, I'm like, no way. Could you envision like, any future where they had Jennifer admit that catcalling isn't as bad as someone get being brought to the point of killing themselves? They're not going to have right. the balls to do that, even mm -hmm. though it's right. one of the most easiest fucking things to write. I could do they're not gonna yeah. do it well here's the thing they don't know that because they haven't watched any of the movies clearly <laughs> yeah they read a single comic book they haven't done any research of any kind so i highly doubt they even remember any of that with hulk they don't know his backstory they clearly don't know hers so no uh, you think a woman's going to apologize to a man in this day and age right. in the show? hell no no I think yeah, part of they're living vicariously through this script it's like mm -hmm. Oh, well, like I said, that's what I said earlier, it's just it's it's the writers just fulfilling their fantasies. Oh, yeah, and yep. it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, their own egos. It's like I, the things I wish I had done or that I could right. have done. Well, and the worst thing is that they're the same people who are in control of writing Hulk and other 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 characters as well. Like she says mm -hmm. all that to him, and he's just like la 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 la. It's like no 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 no. Bruce, he's actually Bruce has something to say. Emotions. Well, I guess, yeah, they're, they're accidentally portraying that he's... Uh... There, there, there was another thing I wanted to bring up, and I know it's slightly unrelated to this, but it just really made me laugh when I watched it. It's like, Abomination is up for parole now. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. I was, I was going to actually bring guy, that up, too. This is a guy who fucking, um, like, destroyed half a city, and, like, you know, he's a, a genocidal... <laughs> Maniac who could transform into an almost well, indestructible it, monster anytime, and they're like, "Yeah, he's up for parole because he's changed now." <laughs> it's like you can't so, let him. They have it so he can change back into a human now. 
Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, this is another example, a classic example of the fact that they hope you don't remember what happened in Incredible Hulk, the 2008 <laughs> yep. movie, which is that he is trying to sell that it's the government's fault that he did everything in that movie when Ross. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's, he's Thunderbolt Ross. Like, he's a fucking intelligent general. No way that he wouldn't have written everything ahead of time so that if anything went wrong that was off the books, which he says in the film, if you go off, you go rogue, like, we're going to have to stop you. And he's the one that sends the Hulk to stop Abomination. How are you going to argue that Abomination all did that under their control? When he, Do you guys remember he puts a scientist at gunpoint to inject him with a bunch of bonus um, Hulk blood and shit? Yeah. Mm. How are you going to argue that the government had you do that? It's like, that's never going to work. But this show will make it work because Jennifer's a great lawyer. She'll get him out of there. And then she'll be like, oh, I made a mistake because he'll be evil. Because well, him writing haikus is a bunch of smokescreen bullshit, I think. Well, and that's the, th that's the thing, Mahler. I was uh, I was thinking about that as, as I was watching the episode because I thought the pacing of the episode was so weird because it just kind of really ended abruptly on this fact of Abomination, like having escaped now. And now he's like, in, in you know doing like fighting or whatever underground fighting and I thought the pacing was just really weird because it ended so abruptly but it was so boring right up to that point and then it was like oh no it's over like and I was like okay well it just kind of got interesting but now it's over and I have to wait for another week to see I it. can explain like, that like, Nina. 20 20 minutes. Minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous it's the just... pacing is all so broken it was. Yeah. It was very. That whole scene's weird. Do you guys remember? She arrives as She Hulk, and they're like, "Hey, no superhero powers inside." It's like, yep. you know, I can spin <laughs> yeah. this all the off, right? Like, what difference does <laughs> so that make? Like, like, none none of this shit matters. Asked? Like from from an editing point of view, like there's a bit where like she's in Hulk's uh, beachfront like uh, lab and stuff. She turns back into human form, and then she goes to sleep, and then he finds her the next day, and he's like. Oh wow, you you turn back into human form in your sleep. It's like no, she was already human when she went to bed and fell asleep. Like th this is just like the the shitty editing that, that goes on in this show. Well, like nothing like the tracks of, from um, one scene to the next. Have you picked up the amount of ADR in this shit as well? Um the amount of lines that are said off screen, one of them uh, he tells he tells her when they're walking into the building, you're going to be the head of our new, you know, superhero division. Mm -hmm. And then off screen, you can't see his face. He's like, superhero people or superpowered people have been popping up all over the place. They didn't feel the need to put that into the original script where they were recording it, explaining where the fuck are all these superpowered individuals coming from? We never, <laughs> when the hell was that a thing? And it's just like, that's just a thing now. He's just like, yeah, th that's the line they came up with for ADR. They're just popping up all over the place. They're coming out of the woodwork. Why? What? What's going on? It's like, well, they, maybe this they, will be... they kind of did that though, Mahler, in like freaking. Falcon and the woke soldier, where everyone and their mom started getting the fucking serum. Well, they all got of a it from that weird scientist. At least they there's a reason for that, as opposed to they coming out of the woodwork, quote unquote. Yeah. Another one, by the way, that was brilliant in the first episode, where you'd think, what would your primary concerns be when you're like, you were heading to your job, you got into a car crash, you went missing for a couple of days, you wake up in someone a friend's house. And he walks up to you. You might think like, oh, first priorities, you need people to know you're safe. Because if all they know about you mm -hmm. is you're in a car crash and there's blood at the scene, like mm -hmm. shit, I need to find out the people who care about me, the people who love me, they need to know. There's no line for that in their conversation. There's just one 80 yard line where Hulk <laughs> says, when you can't see him, oh, I called your parents and told them you're okay. And she smiles. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely oh, pathetic. God. You don't know how to write people. It's they insane. don't. <laughs> and it's it's so true that what you say, because that's what I was thinking about in the first episode. And I was like, doesn't she have a family? Like, doesn't she have mm -hmm. like I and I figured she doesn't. I figured she's oh, probably daddy issues. That's why when they introduced the nuclear family in this episode, I was like, Well, that's kind of surprising because I you know, I thought she didn't have anybody. That's why she didn't call mm -hmm. anyone when she was in oh. a freaking car accident, you know. That's another one. E by everything way, someone... everything operates in a vacuum in this show. Like nothing mm -hmm. matters until the script decides it's important. Right. It's rushed as fuck and it's disjointed as fuck because someone just reminded me, this is in uh, Jay Longbow's video as well, fully recommended by the way uh, if you look at him when they crash and, and and you know when his little inhibitor thing breaks and he's like, yes. oh no, get away it, his lines are really awkward, he says oh no, I'm bleeding, my inhibitor's broken Jed, get away from me, ah, oh, get away from me uh, Jay Longbow zooms on his head when he says all this, his lips don't move at all for like the whole <laughs> thing it's, just, it's all lady up because they were like oh shit, people might not understand what's happening here, I guess we better have him say, Jed, get away, I'm bleeding that machine is completely pointless. He heals almost instantly when he's the Hulk. He's a lot like Wolverine in that way. So him nope. getting stuck in human form is so fucking stupid for him to be he's able to... He gives, he gives some form. weird line about like how if he's in human form, his arm can heal up 
better yeah, or I, something, I, but like it's it's no, weird. So Billy hasn't healed. healed in five minutes, dude. Th- that that's the thing that always bothered me. It's like, okay, your arm got fucked up from the snap, but like you're the Hulk. I'm pretty sure you've got mm-hmm. a crazy healing factor. Like a few days mm-hmm. that would be sorted right out. Mm-hmm. That's but like, drink it, you too. can't have that. You gotta have it so that he took her superior blood and healed himself from it. Well, that's off, even off screen, by the way. It all happened off screen. Yeah, off screen. <laughs> they took away the like pain of it from him mm-hmm. turning her into She Hulk because she almost dies in a freaking car accident. And so, because he's her cousin, he has to give her his blood because they have some kind of rare blood thing. And so he's in pain knowing that he might be cursing his cousin to his mm-hmm. fate. And I that said was- that right at the beginning. It's like, that's such a better storyline because yeah, it's like, he had, had to make the decision woman. to give her this. Yeah, But it's like, that would mean him helping her. Like that would mean a woman getting help from a man. And mm-hmm. you can't, you can't have, have that. that. No, no. None of that. Well, yeah, right. also, she, how she much blood has been spilled throughout the entire MCU now. I mean, there must be a ton of Hulks running around by the amount of blood that he spilled. When he was on freaking Planet Hulk fighting, like, you're telling me that he didn't get a drop of blood on anyone else? Give me a fucking break. There's well, they, millions of Hulks. That's so interesting that you bring that up, Anna, because they're doing that also with Thor, like how Thor all of a sudden in Love and Thunder, like, can now turn people into Thor into for Thor, no reason. Yeah. So here's my power of Thor. And now it's like, oh, okay, the Hulk can apparently do it with his blood. So it's like, like... Well, well, yeah, if we're about to have a, a world ending like, event. To just... React differently to every person. Like, yeah, you, imagine, you... imagine if Hulk, sorry, if Thor could turn <laughs> all the Avengers into Thors. Like, I would let Thor turn me into OP. Whatever he has to do to turn me into Thor, I'm yeah. gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be so Thor after we're done. Well, the, that's just a, the the power levels are getting absolutely out of control. I don't know if anyone's going to care to remember any of the things that happened in Phase Four because they've just blown mm-hmm. everything out of. Whack everything, nothing makes sense anymore. No one I, cares. I, That's the problem. I want to like, forget. Don't care. It's just like, fuck it. Each movie is just its own little, like, grab as much money as you can situation and then move on to the next one. Yeah, like, that's where we're at now. No one, no one cares. What's the it's next like thing? Pillage. That's all they care about. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? It's yeah, like, that was one we... of the advertisings. Like in when when this series was supposed to come out, every single episode, literally like the headline, every single episode of She Hulk will have an end scene, like you know, an, an end credit scene or whatever. Like, yeah. and I was like, who fucking cares? Right? Who fucking cares? Correct. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, well, how is this like a promo for your show? I, I am. I am dreading when they bring Matt Murdock into it. Oh, he's like, coming. He's on the way. He's coming. This, he's going to be a this, joke. This, yeah, he's going to be a joke. Like this character that was dead fucking serious in his own show, which was fantastic. Like they absolutely nailed it. the character. Um, Daredevil was awesome on Netflix. So um, good. They're, they're going to like bend him over a table and fuck him with the, with the show. And he's just going to saying- be a joke. That this show is being review bombed, and that was a big complaint. And they were actually yeah, gonna, they were gonna take it or disable one. the ability yeah. to re- to put it reviews can't be down. The people don't like it. Have they? Has anyone ever said, "Oh no, our content is being positively review bombed"? Don't listen to right? the critics. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to the <laughs> well, critics. It's not as good like, as this. Oh, saying. because it's a woman-run show, it's getting review bombed. And it's like, what about all the other women-run shows from the beginning of fucking time that oh, aren't man. getting review bombed, Mark? Do you love those uh, viral tweets that are like, ah, "I see." When it's not a white male lead, you hate it. It's like I fucking hated *Multiverse uh. Madness*. What do you mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We, we, everyone hated *Thor: Love and Thunder*. What are you talking about? Okay, to be fair, Mahler, *A Multiverse of Madness* didn't have a white male lead. Come on now. Let's, right. let's well, let's maybe. Get real. Be, Neither did Thor: Love and Thunder. I guess you know. That's, no, that's yeah, we're yeah. Ah, the, the old bait and switch, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we really did get to see him almost naked. So you flicked yeah. too hard, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't seen that movie, I mean, but I have seen the screenshots, and I. Hem- Hemsworth put in a lot of hours at the gym. Of course, he's going to show it. Anna, that's Hemsworth. the best scene in the entire movie. That's that's all you really need to see, and it's in the trailer. Christian Bale did a good job, though. She, he did, yeah. he did, but and they he, fucked him. Like it's yeah. like oh, it, yeah. Christian Bale should have been in the MCU in Phase One. True. This watching, is watching Christian Bale in that film, it was like watching Raul Julia in Street Fire. It's like <laughs> an actor that was clearly way too good for the part they were. Yeah, way. And, he, and it was such a it was such a job to him. 
I kind of love that. Like, it's such a uh, sort of mm -hmm. tr like a, a, an approval that he's such a good actor that he was like, I don't fucking know what the MCU is. What am yeah. I playing? Okay, I'll <laughs> right. read the line. I love Delivers that. this powerful performance that he's like, all right, bye. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> wow. You know, what? it's probably because his kids told him, like, Daddy, you were Batman. Like, can you go in Marvel? And he probably was like, all right, fine. My and how are his kids? Yeah. I don't know anything about his kids. His kids like superheroes and stuff. Oh, okay. Makes know. sense. I just, There's a comment yeah, in the so. chat that uh, I think it's interesting from Robert Books. Never seen a bunch of people get so upset over a film and TV series meant for 14 year olds. It's like, if this is meant for 14 year olds, that's kind of even worse because then it's like you're programming these kids. This is how this is what right. adults are like. This is how a an adult office situation really functions. Yeah, I don't yeah, think, I think it's that. that. I think 14 year olds watch. I think it actually is directed toward like our demographic of the 30 year olds females like that's it's so hard to be a female it crowd. seems like who they're trying to appeal to but it, it feels like somebody yeah, in a lizard suit yet. it, it feels like you. there's a there's an actor in a lizard suit who who come up with all this and said oh here let me tell a story of your life experiences which is not even uh, yeah <laughs> it <laughs> it is. Is. Sorry, people accurate. Just, pretending. So, to clarify that person's hoping to see a stream of six 14 year olds reviewing this is that the idea? Oh, <laughs> right. Just, oh, okay you go but, right ahead pal. but that's the thing though i mean th that's also a valid point in a way because that's what i feel like i'm watching when i watch a show on disney plus i feel like it's geared towards kids but right. when you watch a show like this it's not geared towards kids because you well it is because they want to basically like wait Chrissy said it, they want to program kids or they, they want to inst install these like ideas into these subliminal messages like for example this whole idea of Captain America banging someone who like or whether he's a virgin or not like should that be a topic of conversation for a 14 yeah. year old to be listening no. to I don't know I, I think like, as well I mean, like yeah generally generally speaking like with, with things like the MCU it's such a massive like cultural force at this point like it's so pervasive absolutely this is the most um, watched story being told in the world right now yeah mm -hmm. and it, this this is the thing like when it's when it turns to garbage and it puts um really unpleasant shit forward that people are exposed to like just accept as like this is the world this is uh this is how we live um and these are the things that we have to deal with um, it's probably worth pushing back against that because it's not a good thing to be teaching young mm. people. You know, we're we're all exactly. old enough to know mm. like where we're at and like how life is. But like, if you're like the target demographic in this right. case, like fourteen year olds, you're young and impressionable. You'll see this if you were a young girl, fourteen year old girl watching this. You'd be like, oh my god, men are all men are bothered. awful, right? And the kids actually you know, feel this way. Like my my fiance is eleven year old. Like we ask him about what he feels about like film and tvs all the time and he'll actually say like yeah like girls can be whatever they want and guys like not boys not so much it's sad wow, to see that's so sad hey. and it, you know the, and that's again they put it in every single one of their movies now like and again i had a problem with that line in thor when they're talking about orgies like they're like oh let's let's go have an orgy or whatever like, and then, and I'm like this is a movie supposed to be about ki for kids like this is so fucking weird like why would well, you put the, a line like that in the movie on that point by the way two of my all-time favorite movies are incredibles and wally the idea that someone goes well they're directed at 10 year olds they're like i don't fucking care right <laughs> that's either no pick that's they're, they're the thing too my adults so that was we, one thing that Disney always got mad at was when people would say that his movies are for kids. He said, no, they're family movies. They're for everyone at all ages. You can enjoy them. And that was the same thing with John Lasseter, who was in charge yeah. of both of the movies you just named. And I met John and he, you know, would say that he would get excited when a little kid would like his movie as well as an adult. And that's the kind of person he was. So once they booted him out of there, like that's kind of when Pixar went to shit as well. But... On that note, Anna, I heard his new movie amazing. Have you seen it? I, I I'm definitely no, planning on watching it. I haven't. I haven't. I heard it's really, really good. Like some of the best shit, like animation. But John wise. is an incredible storyteller. He's just, you know, very particular about the things that he likes, which is why, you know, they're like, oh, get him out of here. And it's like, you yeah. do realize that uh, freaking Bob Iger bought Pixar. Or John Lasseter and made him run mm -hmm. two companies simultaneously. Like, yeah. give me a fucking break. Well, apparently his new movie's great, and I'm excited to oh, watch I'm it. I'm sure. What's the new one called? Um, it's 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 the one with the kitty cat. I'll I'll, I'll tell you right now. Hold on. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Most people, when they talk about their favorite and the best Pixar movies, is it's usually from an earlier era. Usually, not right. not every yeah. time, but you know. Well, you know what's funny? I'm surprised that you like Wally. I loved the beginning of Wally, but they took Luck. the director off of it in the middle of the movie, and that's why the second half of the movie kind of like, you know, it's not wow. as strong, but. Fun fact about Wally, it had the most concept art of any movie ever. Oh, really? Oh, so really? Wow. I just yeah. remember the fun fact of like the scene where they turn on the lighter. I remember it like broke records for how much how many computer hours was were needed to render it out, just the scene of them looking really? at the lighter that reflected mm-hmm. off the screens and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a gorgeous movie. Um, I like how yeah. they uh predicted yeah, the that. future being full of fat people. <laughs> I <Yeah. laughs> just around on like air scooters. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, all of those people on those little pods, they were just watching Disney content. It was all Disney. I know. Plus on the yeah. <laughs> just pouring out. That, that's that's what they want you. But it's it into my veins. Those are it's all a, the it's a fantastic example of, of the ability to tell stories without a lot of dialogue. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, oh, that, yeah. That, it's great. Like the, the power of animation that can convey all these different emotions and intent and feelings and stuff. Um, just from expressions, from movements, like just little noises from Wally, mm-hmm. that stuff is incredible. It's so it's like the in, it's like the intro to uh, Up. No dialogue there, oh, but yeah. you totally get an entire life story in the space Beautiful. of like a few minutes. Dude, like, I mean, they, they're doing downright environmental storytelling in the opening of Wally. It's like saying it's just for kids. It's like there's clearly stuff your kids aren't picking up. When they mm-hmm. show like all these dilapidated billboards and like evidence of different places having been ransacked because of all, what the results of all this pollution would have been, all the satellites that were made in the sky. It's like plenty of kids yeah. will be like, "What even are those things? What is what is all of it?" I just like the cute robot. I don't like, know. I, just agree. I think yeah. kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's plenty there that will, it'll go over their heads. So I was fine. little that you know, like, you would be what shocked. I'm suggesting is kind of what you were saying earlier. It's just that these films are built so that everyone can enjoy them and. Uh, right. And thus, everyone can talk about them. Yep, yeah, uh, Muller, but that movie is called Luck, by the way. I don't know if you heard me. Luck. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be interested. It's very, very cute. Uh, yeah, Wally is is very interesting, and it's it's interesting to kind of see the downfall of Pixar because it's it's become this kind of like. Well, it really uh, started with Me Too because John Lasseter was one of the first to get Me Too, and I, like I said, I've met him. Like, he's an incredibly nice guy. Did he he's Me Too just- you? Did he grow up you, Anna? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the doll. Where did you touch it? <laughs> oh, no, he's hugged me. No, so John is like, you know, when you see a person and they're like the nicest person, and you know, when you meet a hugger versus a non hugger, yes. I'm not a hugger, but John is like, I'm a hugger. Oh, please, I love hugs. Please. Hugger, please. Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> right. Well, he's a very, you know, nice person, but when you work with him, it's like, he sits there, he doesn't make a single facial expression. And then he's like, that's terrible. You know, when you do your pitch and then he's like, this is how you do it. And he's an incredible person. If you ever get the chance to like watch a documentary on how he works, like I was fortunate enough to see it in real life. So it was like, oh my God. But when you get somebody that's so nice, but when you work with them and they are, you know, they're where they are for a reason. Work ethic. Yeah. You can well, see and it. a lot of women get offended about that. And I remember before I was there, they always said, oh, women like Pixar is notorious for not hiring women. I was like, well, are these women good that are applying? Like, you know, it's <laughs> fucking hard to work at Pixar. But I remember I was told that over and over again. And then when I went there and I'm like, well, everyone that's hired is the best at what they do. So, you know, if you're if you're a woman and you're not that good, I mean, just work fucking harder. Right. And it's just a bunch of women that got offended because one, he's, you know, a very affectionate person in real life. But when you work with him, it's like, well, he's not going to sugarcoat it for you, which mm-hmm. a lot of women don't get. And then you get jealous cunts that want a better job and try to force him out because they're capitalizing on the Harvey Weinstein situation. It was right. absolutely infuriating watching. Oh. So makes me so mad because well, watching what happened to Pixar after he left. I know. Well, then we got the eater, so it's okay. When uh, when She Hulk was heading in and she says like, you know, people will think I got this job from other other things. She looks into a room and says, none of those guys would have had to go through this. Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 it's like, and you and I was just thinking to myself, like, you, yeah, you have, well, no, you have no idea what any of them had to go through to get this a job. job like, on their a group of them. old men are laughing, you know, They're like, ah, kill them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure none of them had any hardships at all. I'm sure you've worked harder instead. Like, why do you want me to hate her? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, like that again. But that was a, a room full of men, so it was、mm. like one of those things where it's like, oh, let me just、Toxic. do this throwaway line where I put down all the men that are here because this is such a male-driven industry, and I have to put in my message of、right. women are trampled on. If you're gonna be a lawyer, if you're gonna work in law, you better be prepared, women, that you're gonna be just faced with constant sexism, people not appreciating who you are, people not. Caring about you, people just being fucking,、uh, you know, just yeah, getting ahead so, of you. It's so <laughs> ironic. Yeah, she's so she's simultaneously complaining about like being pigeonholed as a diversity、right. hire and just like getting an easy in to a company like this,、mm-hmm. while also complaining that these guys got an easy in and yeah, they, like、mm-hmm. they they just had it totally easier than her. It's like, well, you can't have you fucking have both simultaneously. Right, like, one and one is like. Yet they will. And, <laughs> and the、like、other the, thing the too, the writers are so fucking short-sighted and dumb that they、yeah. don't even see what they're doing. It's yeah,、so、and they're very out of she, touch. She was juxtaposed with a scene in the bar where she gets the job offer, and the first thing she asks the dude is, "I want to hire my own paralegal. It's non-negotiable." And I was like, "Oh, so you're practicing nepotism?" And but after know, she said yes, <laughs>、yeah. and then、yeah. she said yes, said yes right away, and then was like, "Oh,"、uh, and then and then. Backed it like backed it up. It was- But the funny part about that scene was that's exactly what like people like Jordan Peterson talk about, where women don't actually like know their own worth. So when when they go into a career、uh, built situation, that's、reasons. not exactly. She didn't even mention okay, like what is the price or like what are you gonna pay me? She didn't even like go close、right. to、mm-hmm. uh, like caring about、It's、actually、summer. what matters when you get an all ob- job offer. Like how much are you gonna pay me? What's you know the stuff she asked about the pension and. The stuff like the maternity leave and all the stuff she asked about the Avengers, she didn't ask about the regular job that was being offered <laughs>、yeah. to her. I was like, "What?" If we can talk, I'll do as fast as I can in terms of her incompetence as a lawyer. We've already got plenty of evidence because on the point of what you were just raising there, right? She brought up all of the the information about the Avengers. Do they get pensions? Do this? Do that? The reason she said she one of the reasons she said she wouldn't want to join to Hulk is that they're a government squad, implying then、yes. of course they if they work for the government, then surely they would have all of these.、Uh, Abilities, and then why wouldn't she know that? She's a lawyer. She must、right. have access to that kind of information. She must have had an interest to it. Of course, Bruce would have had it. Would she not have asked him? Apparently, she doesn't know. But then we know that Sam didn't get anything from the government or from <laughs> Iron Man.、Yeah. So it's like, so that's interesting. But then we simultaneously know Iron Man paid for this enormous facility for Hulk. So it's like, okay, so show you need to talk to the other show to figure out what the fuck is going on. And she、mm. needs to talk about it because then she's like,、oh, "I don't want to work for a government." It's like you in the fucking DA's office. What are you talking about? You <laughs> work for the government. Yeah, on, like, this, this, I tell you, you man, this is, you don't remember anything about you. Very the, not the, very more. Yeah, yeah, but Mahler, yeah, this Mahler, is the problem, right? Falcon tra- was black. Come on now, come on. That, that's <laughs> yeah, like, don't pay the, the military the members. Didn't have、that's、any、right. pension or anything like that. It, it's. I, so, I tell you, man, this is the problem. Like each show just serves as like this, the the ideas board for each writer. And none of them are connected. Nobody's like sitting there thinking, "Okay, how is this going to conflict with what we're doing?" You know, in five different movies or shows or whatever. You know, does this mess with the lore? No one cares. Like, it, none of that matters anymore.、Mm. Each thing just exists in its own little pocket universe. That's that's just where you're at. This is what happens when you've got about twenty different projects running simultaneously.、Mm-hmm. Nobody can、uh, keep track of it all. Do you guys think that they're like infuriated about the success of Johnny Depp and Camille Vasquez, basically, you know, winning that case for him?、Mm. Because now they have like a female lawyer to compare, and she's not woke. She's like very humble and well spoken. <laughs> no, nobody hates her.、Yeah. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, they hate well, her guts. Because looking at that and how、mm. like a lawyer actually is, like a right. Female lawyer that's young and beautiful, which is what they're trying to pitch She Hulk as. Compare Camille Vasquez, a real person, to what they've done to Jen. It's oh my god. I wonder well, what she she would think of She Hulk. Well, so Sorry, there's sorry there's、Mallory. there's two different angles that you can take when it comes to、uh, writing a female character in a male dominated field, and the angle that they've chose. Unfortunately, is just complaining the whole time about it and,、yep. and complaining about the obstacles. When, in reality, women who are in more male-dominated fields, oh, what we gotta do? We 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 like to be able to hang. That that's the thing.、Mm-hmm. Is you know now you do see more of a rise in the whole oh complain let's have this whole victim mentality. But if you actually want to make it as a woman in in a male-dominated field, you gotta be able to hang. And any 
obstacles that you may have to overcome that maybe a male counterpart doesn't, uh, you got to get through it. And, and you want to be, you want to be able to be strong and you want to be able to handle it. And you don't get that kind of message when you're complaining the whole time that you act more entitled or the character in this case acts entitled to everything instead of working harder for it. And I just know myself, you know, uh, having two brothers and growing up being more on the tomboy side, I never wanted to be treated differently. I didn't want to be people to go easy on me or anything like that. If it was like, okay, is this going to be more challenging for me? Uh, because I am different, bring it on. That's the kind of attitude that I wanted to have. And so I don't think that they're mm -hmm. really doing justice to women in male dominated fields or your tomboy types, because we like the challenge. We're Tom not going to be complaining now, about it. I think it's, yeah, like part of it comes down to as well, like the, the different culture between the, the two sexes. Like you'll know yourself having brothers that like guys relate to each other by making fun of each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. They take the piss out of each other, as we say in Britain. But like you do that to a woman, it generally doesn't go down as well because that's not how women, you know, relate to each other. They don't start by like making fun of each other like the, that's mm -hmm. a different you can dynamic very comfortable with someone to be able to do that right, exactly yeah because it's yeah. like i don't know sometimes it's taken more personally or whatever it might be but like that that's how they're different in a lot of ways um but that's what you kind of have to deal with if you're mm -hmm. going to go into that male environment it's like mocking each other it's just how mm -hmm. shit's done there, there was another line in the show in episode two that really kind of like made her seem like an awful person and not like not she hulk <laughs> like jen jen walters was like and maybe this was just me and because i'm just so sick of this shit but i picked up on it where she was with her friend uh like after she got fired and they were like you know she's looking for a job and the girl's like being super nice and supportive and being like well, what about this job and what about this job and she's like i'm just sad and lonely and i was like yeah you lonely came out of nowhere yeah i was like you have a friend here your best friend she's like hanging out with you like helping you, you find a new job you have your cousin you have your whole family, family right. that we meet. uh yeah yet you're sad and lonely like she's i like, don't I need dick I know, like, <laughs> like it's like, what is missing in your life? After tap. <laughs> it's well, just, it's, I just it, love that there was like boxes. Sorry, there was bottles of wine and vodka and stuff just sitting on their, or you know, or table and stuff. It's all around her. It's like ah, oh, that's pretty much the perfect encapsulation of the single thirty-year-old woman. Like, do you, they have yeah, um, cats too? Takeaway the cartons. The they, they yeah, I was expecting more cats. <laughs> I was expecting more cats, and I, I won't lie. I was like, you know, where's her multiple cats? Because, I mean, she's yeah. so lonely. You would they think she would have, like, cat three cats. She should have a whole – she have Hulk cats. Maybe she, <laughs> she would have that <laughs> I actually loved the friend character. I thought she was great. You know, like, I was going to say the same too. thing. I think I think the friend character is fun. She's lighthearted. Yeah. She's funky. She's nice. And she's cute. Like, she's just fun. Yeah. She, 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 she only exists. All the dialogue exists to reaffirm everything right. that she Hulk says. Yeah. It, it's, it's all just like, you know, you're amazing. Like, you, she's you're a yes it. woman. She's <laughs> funky. She's fun. Yeah, but she's a oh, yes she's woman. She's like a hype girl. She's a hype woman. She always has wine. I, I, I think uh, <laughs> what would have been nicer friend. to see, like, you know, I, I think a real friend tells it like it is. And if you're going exactly. wrong in your life, the friend right. would be like, yeah, you're, you're a fucking loser. You need to, like, sort also, your life out or whatever. And they give you the hard truths. Like, just yeah, telling someone what they want to hear. Is maybe um, maybe this is a hot take, but um, I kind of feel I'm feeling the reverse now. Right. So here's my here's my here's my run on that lady. When we first see her at the, at the bar when they're all chanting She-Hulk, she's like, get in there and give them what they want. Like, that hmm, I didn't interesting. like. And she's yeah. like, you know, she's she's like, take drinks, go, 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 go. When she gets to the office, she Hulk is like, 50-50 mm, about the job, especially for the nature of why they gave it to it. But she's like, hey, but look at the stuff we get. Yeah, look, look at, at all the stuff. The stuff. We get. It makes me think, like, isn't this kind of a shitty friend that the, she's yeah. like, I'm benefiting from all of the she attention and the materialism. Her? But she's fun. <laughs> I that my, I, my I, that's how I feel. Like, like, yeah, is she is is she like the best person or the best example of a friend that you'd necessarily want not entirely but for goodness sakes finally something fun in this show it, she doesn't just, 
she's she doesn't not miserable. seem genuine I'll give you that. though because <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like if I like if I had a friend and I was like, I'm so sad and lonely while you're here helping me, I'd be like, What am I chopped liver, you bitch? Like I'm yeah. just I'm I'm spending all this time with you, yet you're being a whiny little shit. Like, you know, just have another drink, yeah. like you know, pick yourself back <laughs> up. Like who fucking cares? I, I think maybe yeah, I think maybe the problem that we've all got here is that we're trying to apply like normal adult dynamics to this mm -hmm. relationship and it's like no this is like written by people with the minds of children right. <laughs> arrested in children. development uh, yeah like so the friend's not going to behave like an actual adult she's just like a cartoon character like oh fuck it yeah, um drinker on that point right we 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 talk, we talk all the time about how there's a level of intelligence that's required they, they're pretty low on that they're clearly running out of it but they, they've also admitted to knowing nothing about how law works how are they going to convince us she's a good lawyer by the time right. the show rolls like and they need they need like a speech stuff, but what happened when they said please sign this so that if you die we can't be held accountable she signs she didn't even read it She's a mm. fucking lawyer. Oh, yeah. that's a good <laughs> yeah. point. Like, what the hell? Nick, never sign anything. Yeah. It's about whether or not Maybe you Nick, die. Like... And she just was like, yeah, it's like the fucking iPhone terms and conditions. But it's all, like, yeah, but it's, all, it's, it's the Taika Waititi approach of like, fuck the law, fuck any long-term consequences. <laughs> just get that joke in there. Like that, right. one, that, that one second laugh that you might get of people. That's Absolutely, all it's yeah. for. Yeah, that's all it is. Uh, there was no fighting in this episode. There was nothing interesting. Mm -hmm. It was just uh, very boring, very flat. It was just, ugh, I don't know. What the hell's happened to Marvel? I don't know how much well, more they, of this um, shit I can take. I can tell you that right now. I'm like, I don't know. Marvel and I have we actually end. lost our minds doing this shit over the past year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I'm not even yeah. sure if this place is real anymore. Did I die and I'm just in purgatory? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is, uh, this is what your content. hell is. It's watching bad MCU movies. It's true. Well, and it's nuts because it's, it's staked up so hard now that it's just not a time where we're not talking about it because there's always something fucking new and they keep doing insane things. They keep destroying everything until there's going to be nothing left except mm -hmm. hey we got dr doom now hey we got galactus now hey we got mephesto mm -hmm. now hey we got reed richards now hey we're just like oh, fuck's sake through 2025 there's stuff coming out ah, <sighs> more, and more and more and more and then who knows what Star Wars will be doing at that point maybe we'll get a ryan johnson trilogy by then mm. um, oh fuck <laughs> off mauler <laughs> fucking no ah. hey, Fuck it at this point. I want to see a Star Wars. Go on, Disney. Try it again. <laughs> yeah. Let's, Let's see what you got. Hey, speak, speaking of content, though, House of the Dragons out. Like, no. that, that, I, I, I wanted to talk about this, right? Mainly because it came out and I genuinely had no fucking clue that it was even out. <laughs> so I saw a random tweet from Gary, I think, on Twitter, just you know, saying, like, oh, House of the Dragon was whatever. I'm talking about it with Mauler. I was like, holy shit, it's out. There's been <laughs> no advertising. Nobody seems to care None. about it. There was nothing. What's funny about that, Drigger, is that like I was worrying about when all these shows came out. So I haven't keep, kept track of it. And uh, while I was on a stream, it was an EFAP stream, I was talking about how we got She Hulk, this, that, to cover. And my fucking phone pinged. And as I was literally talking about how I got to cover House of the Dragon, probably, I was like a message from Gary, would you like to cover House of the Dragon? I was like, oh, hey. I was like, oh is that out right now? And he was like, no. And I was like, oh, thank fuck. I've not got time to watch all this shit, man, and keep up. Drink, but drinker, drinker, how yes. did you miss all the amazing marketing for uh, House of Dragon? Because I could not stop seeing all the amazing marketing for it. Like, you know, Fans are racist because now we have a race swap character and they're all like, what the hell is this? And, uh, you know, things like that. Or I mean, Roe we Wade in this episode. Like, how did you not see all of that? I mean, that's just par for the course at this point with any new show. <laughs> <laughs> After Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's weird. It's like um, what you've got is like a giant black hole of creativity, which is uh, the rings of power. And then you've got like this tiny little like planet orbiting it, which is like the house of the dragon. And like, it's just, it gets swallowed up by it. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. so much negative publicity about one that it just, no one cares about the other, mm -hmm. but it's weird because they're coming out around about the same time. Like wow. house of the dragon. Yeah. Rick got... is going to be out in a week or two. Like there's, there's not much between them. I'd also go as far as saying we've got an army of beaten wives watching house of the dragon. Okay. That's how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just like, what have you got for us? And they even reference Game of Thrones a couple times because they're like, remember that awesome show? And it's like, don't, don't, don't. Why would you bring it up? Mm -mm, don't bring it don't up. Bring it that up. was a horrible time. I don't haven't seen Game of Thrones. <gasps> oh, Chrissy, don't. You're innocent. Stay yeah. innocent. So innocent. Yeah. I, yeah, I watched one episode of like the siblings going at it and I was like, yeah, I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, as a Scots person, that was just like me. Like, I was sold. That was every like, day. Was that show. That's just uh, Saturday night, really. I thought House of the wow. Dragon looked nice. Like, if I could say something nice about it, I'd be like, all right, I love the costumes. The um, Pinterest costumes? Yeah. <laughs> well, they oh, definitely put no a lot more detail show. in it than what the hell is going on with Rings of Power. I can tell you that right oh, now. Yeah. I've seen oh, some yeah, screenshots. Yeah, armor. Oh, I was so confused about the one black guy, and I was like, before I say something that sounds a little racist, like oh, go. in the realm that they're living oh, no. in, are there even black people nearby? Uh, so there, there, yes, there are. Him. Yeah. Okay. So he's, so he's um, from Essos. So the people with the white hair, Chrissy, they're from a part of Essos called Valyria, which shit hit the fan and they all kind of had to leave and you can't go there or you'll get infected with the thing and you'll die. Valeria disease. We have that too. It's world. like a stone Monkey disease. That it, it it's that, it's right. stone. But so he's um he's not Targaryen. His family is just from the same place. I think they have like a distant great grandfather or something because everyone is married to each other by the way to keep the bloodline strong so but he he's still has the Targaryen like white right hair though doesn't he yes he does, he does yeah. because he's from Valeria so he's kind of like the same I wouldn't say species but he's the same whatever but okay. he's he is part Targaryen in a distant lineage but he's married to a Targaryen so they're like I don't know third or fifth cousins or something but He's from sure. a different family, but they picked like the biggest beta bitch to be like, that's the one that they made the black guy. And it's like, okay. really? Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but if you watch it, like, I mean, yeah, the race swap is there, but I'm like, it's not like they changed like Viserys to be black. They changed literally someone who is only a very distant relative that came from the same place. Right. Okay. But I, I just I, right. I thought it was interesting that that was like part of the biggest marketing campaign was this yeah. dude yeah. thinks you which know, you would think why wouldn't you build your entire th it, it felt like this was made for Matt Smith like Matt Smith yes. called him and was like yo I really like Game of Thrones let me be in this and then yeah. when you watch the behind the scenes they're like oh yeah Matt chose to play Damon this way instead of making Damon like a bloodthirsty heartless cunt he mm -hmm. like actually loves his family and it's just a shitty situation and i was like that was my favorite part of it like the second matt smith comes on it's like captivating because he's such a talented actor yeah. mm, it's yeah. really yeah. fun to see him in this environment too like yeah. Sort of, like, i wasn't expecting to like, see him naked i was like ah matt smith's ass like, oh what? my gosh that's the like, like, reason i think it's about like the like, frames of his dick and i was like i didn't need to see that part <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i needed to see it and I he didn't work that. out either. So I was like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, he didn't work out? Oh, that's sad. No. He's, not, he's, he's not just, he's just and not. His torso, and I'm like, maybe go to the gym a bit. Because you're supposed to be like a knight in shining armor covered in blood. Like, they're, the, like, they're doing a lot of that with characters in general. You don't see the same type of characters that you saw when we were growing up and stuff. Really like lean. when you saw like Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff and all all like mm -hmm. you, you looked at these these characters and thought man i want to be cool <laughs> like them and now it's to the point to where even like with the latest predator movie and all that uh all the characters are just very skinny they're very like there's no melanie you don't look on, at them and think where's the goals man melanie I need some have you gym seen motivation melanie have you seen reacher mm -mm. girl watch reacher yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank me later. I, I think you, you'll appreciate Reacher. He that's a that's a large gentleman. It's a very big <laughs> okay. He, he's a big lad, so he is. Well, you know what I really appreciate Wait. in the boys is that they never show Homelander outside of his suit, and it's obviously yeah. like a padded suit, like he Wait, has a muscle totally. suit. They did in season three. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he's, 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 he's naked in a scene. If you remember. Well, I mean, but you don't like they don't zoom into his muscles. At least I don't remember. Was I not? Paying I, 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 no, wait, wait I brought. I brought sneaky. Really, suspicion. I don't that remember was, this. Okay, that was. No, I, don't I think that, that was all man. Like, wait, what, which, looked, show, which show? Ada. The boys. Homeland. Yeah, the boys. He's always oh, in I the like, seen padded it. suit. Yeah, it's um Ashley sees him naked when she used to tell him something, and he's just sitting in a couch like naked. I don't remember why. I wait, 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 wait. Is there I, not? Yeah, there's not a bit where I he fucks himself. That. Basically, like a guy can manifest. Oh, there's that anything. too. Yeah. Yeah, and like he manifests as another homelander so he can get it on with so, himself. So like Mola dreamed that. Uh, I hope that don't gaslight me. I didn't make this up. <laughs> I, I think I, I don't know what you're talking about, Mola. You <laughs> 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 dream. 
<laughs> but yeah, it was weird. Like it had that slightly fake look about it. Like I don't know if he was wearing a bodysuit even then, or if it was CGI'd or something. Like it just didn't look like his. There are no screenshots on Google of this Mauler. Okay, I'm going to find watching? it. Google, <laughs> look, I'm doing dash. this for a reason. Okay, don't assume anything. <laughs> find wait, me wait, a photo wait. of this because I don't believe it as of right now. Wait, when we were talking though about House of the Dragon, like the the general like plot oh, arc yeah. of the first episode was that they really wanted to hammer home the fact that um the Targaryen dynasty is kind of like it was in Britain like a thousand years ago where it's like you didn't have queens as such like it had to be a male heir that you mm-hmm. you had and so it because of circumstances like you know certain kings didn't have like uh, sons you know it creates like a, a bit of a crisis because they don't have an obvious heir to the throne and that's what you end up with in this, um, where they they have to decide on, well, do we try and um, you know give it to like the the queen that should have had it like a, a generation earlier, or do we give it to like the the um, young woman who's just like up and coming? Um, how is this going to be done? And that that's kind of that's the the basis, I guess, of the conflict that's going to be happening this season in this show, like the fight for succession, because. Clearly, the king's not going to be around for that much longer. He seems mm-hmm. to be old and ill. Mm-hmm. He's um, got something weird on his back. Well, is um, it like dragon scale? It's, 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 it's a flea. He thinks it's from the chair, the mm. sword chair. It might be. You know, it's a bit of a spiky like chair. They actually even the showed him getting cut on it on his hand, uh, yeah. which I thought was Maybe interesting. Maybe a thin skin. Yeah. But Maybe. Paddy did look confused in this a lot of the time. Um, I will say I was distracted a little myself just because I'm so familiar with him. It's Hot Fuzz. I couldn't stop thinking about Hot Fuzz. <laughs> 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 yeah. the scene where the two Andys just keep like coming yeah. back in. <laughs> like, 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 what the fuck is... What is he doing in the, the fucking King of Westeros? <laughs> Angel! <laughs> Don't you go being a twat now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, and I'm sure. Look, I, I no knock against him. He's, I think he's doing a good job. I just, I don't know. I just, it was a bit distracting. And it's think... strange to see him with the white hair and stuff in Game of Thrones. One of the interesting things that I've noticed, like in in terms of reception for this show, has been the fact that like some people are saying that uh, I think what was the main character's name? Like, Rehenis, Re- 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 What was her Rhaenyra? name? Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra. That that chick. Rhaenyra. Um, that she's like better than Daenerys now, and it's been only like one episode, and they're like, well, she hasn't yeah. like killed everyone yet, so. Yeah, say, but it's been one episode, it. dude. Like it, it's but like Nina, what? no babies killed, zero. <laughs> Come on, it's yeah. got to count for something. <laughs> one baby died. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's right. true. But she baby didn't died. kill the baby. That's true. You don't know. She could have willed his she, death. She could have. Yeah. Damn. It was off screen. Witchery. Um, well, they, 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 you know, I, I guess a lot of the um, focus that they were trying to put on this was like the dangers of childbirth in like this medieval environment where they, mm-hmm. you didn't have modern oh, medical God. science. And they never want to have a baby when, like, when they're having the Aww. fight scene and Just then don't all get of a C-section. Like, my hand inside her stomach. I was like, ah, no, ah. stay away. Uh, it, it looked like That's it would sting bad. a bit. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for any anesthesia. They didn't even tell her what was happening. They were like, "Oh, dude, she'll she be she okay." I was no curious about that. The- if the if the reality is she dies and the baby dies, or the baby survives, would it not be worthwhile maybe telling her? Or I guess he decided it wouldn't be. Her heads up. Yeah. Right. That's the thing is, if you tell most most pregnant women in that kind of situation, especially during like that time period and stuff, would say, "Save the baby." Like they would be totally. Right. Yeah. I, would have thought so. I, mean, I, I think the way it's presented in the show, the problem is it's like it's not like one or the other, it's more like they're both gonna die, or we can potentially right. save the baby, and that's, that's it. Saying, yeah. So it's like it's not really a choice, like it, it's you a horrible well, situation, it but it's like but yeah, she seem like she knew well, she like, was I, gonna I, die. But was, yeah, if she knew she would have understood, she... <laughs> I think she would have been okay well, with it. Did you guys ever watch um it's the Frankenstein movie with oh my god, I'm blanking on his name, but Robert De Niro plays Frankenstein and then the dude Oh my god, he's a freaking famous actor. He directed this. the first Thor no. movie. No, no, I've seen it. Yeah, okay, um, well, yeah, yeah. The scene, like the mom is obviously older, like she's in her late forties, and she's having the baby, and she's like, you know, save the baby, like let me die. Remember that? 
Well, so yeah, uh, just to, well, most yeah. women would react. Well, most yeah. women say that a lot. Well, that, that, just to right. clarify, though, there's you said that like they said that there's no way the, the mum's surviving, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that seems to be what the maester said. Yeah. Yeah, because if the if the reality was you have to choose one, I could see why he may not have told her because he decides right. he chooses the kid himself. But if the reality is she's dead either way, you'd think he'd probably explain it to her because man, it created quite a fucking horrifying scene where like she's gradually getting held down and then knives are coming out and it's just like what what what, 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 what what's going on? It's yeah. just like oh, don't you at worry, least honey. at least if you told her it's like well we can't you know you're you're kind of going to die no matter what we do so like right. we can at least try and save the baby it's like what well, that's shit it's a horrible situation but she might understand at right. least but like yeah, she will willing right maybe here. she'll willingly give her life for her child yeah. then like well, it didn't, really didn't, it. didn't even do it right like when you get a c section it's supposed to be underneath the bump of your belly they literally cut into the top cut of into your it belly. I mean, I can, cut I can belly it's, down. it's back then anna they didn't have like yeah. Yeah. It's still like done it like four times then i mean you can look at at, um, I mean, they have plenty of like historical art for doctors showing that where oh, that know, they wow. that they did that back then. to cut because they've done it on animals. I mean, heck, even in the Kevin Costner Robin Hood movie, uh, they do the C section back then. Oh, okay. so it's not like it was unheard of. I mean, look at Macbeth. Uh, mm -hmm. McDowell was, you know, not born of woman because he was a C-section baby. So they'd done it before mm -hmm. and had been successful. So you don't cut into the top of a fucking stomach to pull out the baby when the baby is literally trying to come out of the lady bits, right? You right. Cut as close to there as possible. I think yeah. it, right. to them, it's like brand new as a form of, uh, as an option. This really like primitive, I guess, the version of it. I see what you're saying. It's yeah, just that it's, it's, they've seemed to decide well, that the, the, the woman does not doctors survive. To know that, right? Right. I mean, um, if they're doing they this on up. animals and like horses and stuff, you would yeah, think maybe. you would have a little bit more knowledge. But cutting into the top of her fucking stomach and then sticking their hand in, that was just for oh, the Oh, that sounds awful. did that for more through more drama brutality yeah they want to show that like that 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 craziness but there was another conversation that we had in the back before the show started about that scene that i thought was really interesting that chrissy and melanie brought up like about how there was like you know they they, they showed very little nudity in that scene versus mm -hmm. like the sex scenes can you guys expand yeah. on that I didn't really uh, want to see that though, Nina. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think anyone wanted but, to see it, but it's like a like, sheet up it, or something, like some well, kind it, of setup. Yeah, like what she, what she was doing was like they had her fully clothed, which was just weird. Like if mm -hmm. you had a woman who was about to give birth, yeah, you're gonna fuck you, that you dress up. That, well, she's gonna be naked. Like, it's like you, you're not gonna want anything in the way because she has to be able to to give birth. Like, I know it just felt like a weird thing to put in the way. Like. If you yeah. were to show her naked in that scene, it's clearly not going to be sexualized in any way. Right. It's just exactly. it's you have towels on it, you, like cold, cold, yeah, well, like but red it's and stuff. Going to be more hard hitting because you're showing like the actual reality of of giving birth. Like it's not it's not some beautiful like right. wondrous scene or anything. Like it's it's kind of uh, it's painful. It, it's uh, it's quite often very gory. But that's the reality of it, and it's going to be shocking to the audience to see her naked trying to do that. But they didn't. They had to cover everything up, and it just felt like a weird choice. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I don't yeah. really get why also they would thought do that. It was weird that we got um, a lot of the the blood and gore aspects, but when they literally chop open her belly and then they have a wide shot where it's like there's a bit of blood, you know, right. some there. It's like, dude, that little... would have filled the fucking you know, room. You yeah. know, Glad Riel would have done that. Like she'll give birth in fucking full armor, like in the middle of the fucking <laughs> battle. Yeah. Like, but then they'll show full on some guy bending over a prostitute and like. Slam yeah. Yeah. That's it, yeah, they yeah. obviously they're yeah. happy to do the sexualized nudity, which is yeah. like I thought they what I thought that's what they were trying to get away from with this mm -hmm. iteration of Game of Thrones, but clearly not. You know, they'll, they'll really crank those sounds as well to begin the scene. The oh, <laughs> God. all righty then, Let's see what words. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking conversation stuff. Right <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're yeah, finishing the stream right now. I'm ending this. More. They're the ones that put it in the show, not me. Oh, <laughs> somebody needs to clip that and put it on a loop, and it's like Mahler ASMR. <laughs> Amaranth shit going on. Oh, How's no. the dragon, everybody? That's what happened. <laughs> I mean, we mock it, but like generally, I I didn't hate it. You know, I, I think um, it's kind of a cautious start for a show like this. Like, it wasn't like, 
you know, there wasn't like big battle scenes and it wasn't like the original Game of Thrones where you've got the mystery of like the White Walkers and stuff that really gripped you and pulled you in. It's much well, more just the political machinations of like a, a royal dynasty. They're trying to find succession. Yeah. But the, Drinker, that's one of the reasons that I'm kind of awed about like the reception of the show because I've seen like along the lines of like she's better than Daenerys. I've also seen this is way better than Game of Thrones episode one. Like, and I'm like, really? Like this? I don't. I, don't I mean, yeah. If you look back to that first season of Game of Thrones, man, it was a little bit rough at times. Um, hey. But. The it, first it, episode was fucking epic, dude. Like, I don't know. But I think it, it was, was, the first season was great. I it, thought it so was. Too. I think there, there was, you know, there was obviously budgetary shortcomings and stuff like that. Fine, sure. I, I don't mind too much about that sort of thing. Um, you, you could tell in some ways, like they maybe hadn't quite figured out some of the characters. Like they felt a well, little bit rough. Didn't places. they sh reshoot that entire first episode? I heard that they like the first reception was so, like yeah. terrible. Well, they had a pilot well, then, that like we'll never see. Yeah, the first, the first <clears throat> battle Tywin had with the uh, crossing over with a portion of Rob's army, they cut all of that because it's in the book, but they just didn't have the money Wait, at the Rob's time. So Tyrion gets knocked out and misses it all. But the thing is, like, I don't compare it to the first season of Game of Thrones because, like, we've been there and done that, and this is like they, they're working on the experience of having made Game of Thrones, and so mm -hmm. I would compare it to Game of Thrones at its peak, you know, where you had some incredible dialogue. Yeah, season three and four, like where yeah. you had great actors, great dialogue, hard hitting, like Ooh, unexpected yeah. scenes. Yeah, um, and compared to this, where it's like it all feels a little bit amateurish and well, a little bit like simplistic comparison. I said this to um on Gary's stream, drinker, but it really felt to me like a um a sort of pick and mix of what they assume we liked about Game of Thrones back when it was good. Mm. That, like. Look, here's a character who's really, really vicious and angry, and he wants yeah. power. Then here's a character who's really powerful, but he's kind of old and he's losing his grip and he's not got an air. And you go, here's mm. a character who's really smart and yeah. conniving and sticks to the shadow. He has some titties, he has some gore, he has some. Oh, what else do you want? You got a Yay. tournament? Hey, you guys it, like that? It was, a tournament. It was like simplified. medieval times. I was like, wow, <laughs> I've seen I mean. this I'm in not, Jersey. Not, yeah. I want to reassure you, I'm not even complaining. I'm just saying it really felt like them being like, please come back. We've got the things you like, yes. and you're like, mm. um, See, I might, like to I me, might. they're like, it. Matt Smith was like, "Hey, I want to be in this show, or I want to be in this world. Can you guys make me a show where I can be the main character?" <laughs> yeah. so, that's honestly like, what it felt like. It, and I'm like, you know like, what? I really like Matt Smith, and I think he did a great job. Like, th it just felt like a Matt Smith episode. Like, this is Matt Smith's show. I'm here to watch him be this character. Like, That's Matt, be Matt Smith is a funny one, right? Because he's obviously a talented actor, but it's like he picked, he's picked so many shit projects to be involved in. Morbius! <laughs> Morbius, he, he was in Morbius? fucking, he, he was actually in Terminator Dark Fate. He had a much bigger oh, role. Oh, yeah. He was going to be in, uh, He was yeah. in Morbius and he was literally <laughs> playing like the doctor. Like in, Matt oh, Smith, right, the okay. doctor, as like more in more. Well, he was going to be Palpatine um, in um, in Rise of Skywalker. All those scenes got cut. Wow. Mm. I can't remember what the story was on that, but yeah, he was supposed to be in Star Wars Episode Nine, but he got everything. I didn't got know that. Yeah, yeah, he was he, 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 he was in Last Night in Soho. I mean, he was good in that, yeah. but it was kind of a weird movie. Like, did really make also. Was it Gary that mentioned this? I assume it's true, but it was like Karen Gillan convinced him to get into Hollywood movies from uh, moving on from Doctor Who. Yeah. He's just had oh, stinker wow. after stinker after stinker after. No, no, no. She, she, no. She convinced him to get into superhero movies. Oh, oh, like, oh, 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 and Morbius. And Morbius. Why? Why, Morbius. why, Matt? Morbius. Of all the fucking projects, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, Karen. Dude. But it was done? so funny, though, because when he played Morbius, I was literally like, wow, I'm watching Matt Smith reprise his role as Doctor Who. Because he literally did the dance. Like, he did the Doctor Who dance in Morbius. And I was like, no. what is happening right now? It was uh, oh, yeah, Gary said, uh, Gary said Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield to convince him. Okay. Yeah. Same, same, um, same fuck up. <laughs> damn, yeah. damn, Andrew. God, you got, you got a better script. My God. The the other well, thing I was going to bring up was him. I'm he sure the millions wanted... of dollars also it was enticing as well. Oh, of course, but like you want him to have a role that's actually good because fuck, he's a good actor, you know. He, he is. Brings he's in the same boat as Christian Bale now. It's like he was basically wasted in a superhero movie, like completely mm. wasted because he's so, a good so, actor. 
Someone wants to describe Matt Smith as a handsome Frankenstein and like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's I mean, dude, he, has, he has an incredibly unique face. Right? He does. It is unique. Agree. That's a nice way to he put it. He has no eyebrows, and it's very uncomfortable Who sometimes. Needs eyebrows, and you have all that talent. He doesn't have <laughs> eyebrows. Why have I not, Why haven't I ever noticed that? That's insane. He, he always he always does this thing as well. But see, when he's talking to someone, he always like goes like this, like tilts his head like really down and looks down his yeah. nose at them. He does. It, do it, that. It's, a, it's a weird thing where it's like it's trying to intimidate them, but like he does it like in basically every role. Well, he does. Uh, that's tough. a trick that actors will do, so that way the camera has to be looking up at them, and it gives them like that power stance in a scene. So Wait, is it, he's looking up or he's looking down? He's looking down at you. He's looking he's down. He's looking like this. So that well, way he, he's obviously a big guy, but he always tilts his head down, and it's like that kind of intimidating thing where you kind of look over. Like if I was doing this, it's like I'd be looking over my glasses at someone, you know, mm -hmm. just like, like boring right into them. Yeah, uh, it's it's an yeah, it's an odd choice, but like I don't know. I guess it's but it works sometimes, like especially in Doctor Who. It worked. Like, he used to do that all the time, and it was it was very it was cool. It was a comical, very quirky Matt Smith thing that he came up with. I liked it. Wow, well, he That's really has zero weeks. eyebrows. It looks like somebody Hold whacked you. his eyebrows off his head. I was I was gonna say as well, like you, you know the the jousting tournament that they have in that first episode, right? Where it degenerates into guys just straight up fucking killing each other, kill each other. Yeah, I like. He is looks that, like someone took an attractive. Oh my god! Looks like somebody took an attractive guy and melted him just a little bit. Oh, <laughs> oh god! It's, it's oh handsome god. Frankenstein. I'm telling you, like he yeah, looks like melted does. Channing Tatum. Oh, like, it, it's oh, over and right so on the brink of being good, like though. horrible, like and terrifying. But yeah, I just I never yeah. thought we'd get to see Doctor Who go to town in a brothel just. Why wow! Not, I guess, yeah, you know? that was uh, it, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> you hear all, hearing all the slapping noises as he goes at it, like yeah. oh my god! Oh my I was god. like, he doesn't even care if she comes. Ugh! Oh, oh my yeah, god! Um, I saw, it's difficult. It's just like we see when you hear that and like nobody's making any noise. It's just like that kind of slapping of flesh against flesh. Like, it's uh, like uh, it's, uh, it's just like really, the really, it's just really uncomfortable, and it's it. <laughs> yeah. She was, she was phoning it. it in. She was well, counting down from 60. She was like, when is this? Drinker, on the whole um, people dying thing, um, I really felt like I was either not understanding the reality of the situation or that this was disjointed as fuck. When you have people very casually dying, you have um, Otto Hightower sitting there and they're like, uh, I pick your son to, to joust. It's like, oh, that's a there's a bit of a back and forth going on there. I can see what you're doing. But if this is a tournament where people can very easily die, I feel like you as a father would be like, oh, fuck. Mm. Like, no, you'd be staring. You'd be so if, you were, if you were, like, uh, the head of a, like, a, a great house within Westeros, you wouldn't send, like, your son to go no, into this that, yeah. tournament no. where, like, there's, basically everyone's going to die except the winner of, of everything. And it's like, well, no, that's not how these things were done. Even it's if not he's like good, an accident or, or a fight to the death in the sense of like a desperation move. Like some of them are like, you've clearly won. They just go, right, time to chop your head off. <laughs> it's just like, oh shit. Like, are you, are we, are we, is that okay? Is that, is that a. By the way, I mean, we, we, me and Gary brought it up, but you know when he does that move where he like kills the horse in the joust by like <gasps> going so over sad. the thing? Well, so I was like, does that break the rules or not? And I was looking in the comments, and basically everyone says, yes, that absolutely yeah, breaks the yeah. fucking rules. There was, oh. was really strict rules around jousting. It's like the, for the whole reason of like, it, I don't know, it'd be like boxing. Like there's there's yeah. rules about what you can hit, what you can't, mm -hmm. because otherwise, like it would just be a free for all disaster. Um, and it the point was, like, it was it was meant to be like competitors would would uh, knock each other off their horse but like you weren't there to kill your opponent no oh. and if my fucking son was like i want to just play around the tournament i'd be like it's not worth your life mate <laughs> just, like, go yeah. play with the you don't gain anything from this really it's just yeah. like bragging rights really yeah a bit of glory sure but like and maybe even some equipment I mean, or whatever but like yeah, why? if it was like you literally get to own the the daughter of the queen or something like oh sorry the daughter of the king it's like oh, okay well there's some incentive there but it's like yeah otherwise fuck that no way and how many of those like flowered crown things does each of these princess girls get like is it one like, so they have, one, they get one each right yeah. their favor okay 
See, in, in in proper medieval jousting tournaments, they would give articles of clothing, and the more intimate the clothing was, the more favor you gave to the knight. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not snap a bra off and throw yeah, that down on the pole? Yeah. Yeah. Your goddamn panties. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't want I don't want a fucking flower wreath. I want I want your fucking pants right Yeah, now. fucking medieval G strings. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah, I stuff like that's just weird. It's like they they're they're bringing in things that we recognize, but like in a weird way where it's like all warped and distorted. I, I'm just one of those people who's uh, like I, I I'm Persian. I hold a grudge like for a really long time, so I'm I'm not over the Game <laughs> yeah, of Thrones situation, I'm with you. and uh, I'm not over like I'm not just the series. I'm not over George R. R. Martin basically screwing over the fans and never giving us a book ending. I'm it, even if Winds of Winter comes out, we're never getting a Dream of Spring. That's a dream. It'll stay eternal. Um, and I don't. I, He's going to go down in in history as the the craziest author who created this entire universe and then never ended his story. And it's going to be it's going to be an absolute uh, weird thing to leave behind like that. But I just I'm just not over it. So I haven't watched. I, I I'm not excited about this weird prequel. Uh, I didn't I didn't watch the episode. I was planning on it. But I didn't watch the episode because I got into a crazy long man style stream last night and I didn't get to watch it. But Which was I nine did. hours. Nine hours. Nine hours? Are you kidding me? It no. was hilarious. Yeah. I came in and that's, like that's longer than a fucking hours? work day. Mm -hmm. No way, man. No it way. was amazing. Uh, but it, it's just one of those things, though, where I'm, I'm kind of like, I feel weird watching game of thrones or not game this this show that's based on the game of thrones universe and i know where everything will lead and i don't mm -hmm. like where it leads and i'm like well what the fuck is the point of watching this at this point uh, talk, mind yeah. you for me there's a point because i'm a content creator and i can i can do that and like you know compare it to things like uh, you know, brings a power that's coming out. That's a fantasy show. It's very similar. That's my job now. I could do that. But at the same time, if I was somebody who wasn't like, if, I, if this wasn't my job, I wouldn't sit down and watch the show. I honestly wouldn't. I'd be like, whatever. They're gonna probably fuck it up anyway. That's how I kind of feel about it. Well, so I mean, you're upset. Like you're I said, burned. if if I were watching it and it, it's Garfield. terrible, and just be like, well, I hate this as much as I hated the last time you guys showed me your content, and then if it's good, it's like. Yeah, how long is that gonna last? Like, there's a bitterness no matter what, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, and there, there is that underlying, is. like, you know, this is what's keeping George from from writing his final book. Yeah, there's that too. I'm I'm sick of yeah. You, some people are trying to guess like why I'm sick of Game of Thrones, but but you guys like they destroyed all the characters. Season eight was, I still remember crying <laughs> over season eight. Uh, I mean, it was the entire reason I found Gary's channel to begin with was season eight of Game of Thrones ending and how upset I was at it. And then I went into Gary's chat and then realized that I wasn't alone because I was literally crying about how bad it was. And that was wow. That was a crazy time. Like uh, we just boot up a stream to talk about episode five. I remember me and Wolf, and we had like fucking more than ten thousand people rushing in to be like, "This was wow. horrible, mm -hmm. horrible." <laughs> we're just like, mm -hmm. "Oh God, what's happening?" Everyone's really watch upset. It. Yeah. The, the 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 bell was the episode Hold on, that was the bells, yeah. worse than Lost than the Lost backlash. Wait, I, I think it was. I still oh, reference wow. this. Lost backlash was... happened before the internet, like like yeah, social media, really mm -hmm. took off. Mm -hmm. you didn't, you mm -hmm. I still think. Even with Lost, I still think nothing will ever take the cake for the, the episode 5 of season 8 of Game of Thrones did. To the point where, I told Agreed. you before, I went to my dentist for a normal checkup. And I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? They are like, yeah, yeah, fine. Like, what, what do you get up to in your day-to-day? -day? This, that, the other, then watch TV, you know, here and then. And then they were just like, did you see that Game of Thrones episode? Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Then they were like, I hated it. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah, like everyone. Is... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the dentist. They're... The normal, average, everyday people fucking hate it. I, I was there when my family watched it because they, they loved Game of Thrones. And um, a few of them fell out on episode three, but uh, a couple stayed in. Episode five knocked them all out. I've said this before. My dad was still in it. He was like, no, I, I want to see how it ends. You're still going to be good. They put Brad on the throne. He went, oh, what is that? What is that? <laughs> that was me, Mahler. I was, was like hanging point. on. I was he hanging on till the last minute, and I was like, "Come on, it's gonna end good. It's okay. I trust you guys." No, no. It, it, it was, was interesting. Media watches ever. It was interesting being on the on social media and on the internet as someone who. 
just didn't get into Game of Thrones either because then I just remember just the collective meltdown on Twitter mm -hmm. that everyone was having. And uh, I had no idea what was even going on, but I was reading all the comments. And it was very entertaining. It, insane. And, and you know what's so crazy, too, about the show is I actually predicted that Bran was going to be king. Like, for, for the longest time, I thought he, he was going to make Bran king because the way he had written the books, I thought that he planned on making him king at the end of the books. Um, but it, it's just like all the stuff that led up to it that we missed, like how the Mad Queen actually becomes the Mad Queen and all the stuff mm -hmm. like that. It just they really did. They should have taken up the offer of doing it in 10 yeah. seasons. And it, it didn't you, know what, you know, what's funny. It it's like you can, almost, you can almost tell the point where they ran out of book material to cover yeah. and like they started having to do it themselves. It's like yep. it, it flipped from like really unpredictable, grounded, like believable shit. Mm -hmm. Why is my dog doing <laughs> What is your dog <laughs> doing? I just noticed that. <laughs> oh, my dog is all Oh, she was rolling over. I just oh. my belly rub. <laughs> This is, this is did you think she had died or something? Yes, it can happen. She's just right? like rolling. I know it was so funny. She was like, eh. this, "This is critical doggo number two, actually." So like he's, uh, he, he's yeah, he's a bit critical more active. Parker. We critical Parker. Parker. Yeah. Parker. Yeah. It's critical Parker. Parker. Than the other one. So he, might, he does things occasionally. He moves around and all that crazy stuff. You know? <laughs> when did the other one just like come out? What's that? When did Game of Thrones first come out? That was 2004. I don't know. Yeah, 2011, right? I think 2012 or something. Damn. Let me confirm. But I'm pretty. I always yeah. figured. Ah, I'll watch it at some point. But damn, yeah, it was years later. Remember, remember how the early seasons? Like it really felt like anything could happen at any time. Like it was the unpredictable. Oh, yeah. Eleven. Like, it was unshocking. Wow. Sean B's yeah. head was fantastic. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm into this." Oh my he god. just killed the best character. Even, even the conversations the between people felt like adult. They felt mature. They felt like nuanced. They felt um, unpredictable. They can go in any direction. That's that, that's what happened with me in Game of Thrones. Was literally like that, that last scene in the first season when they jump off his head. I was like, "How?" is this happening i have to go find out what happens i can't yeah, wait yeah, the whole season so i read the the books like immediately yeah, yeah, right after um i had a friend i would who Spoilers. just loved tv and didn't see game of thrones i showed him the fifth season he didn't believe me he was like sean bean wouldn't die they wouldn't bring on a fucking star like him and just kill him that's absurd he's gonna be back they'll resurrect and they'll do something i was like dude they don't no and he was the reason i started back. watching the show because i was like it's boromir i need to watch this yeah <laughs> that, dude, that was legit like, everything i know that was legit the way they they like jump started that show i remember people pitching it to me it's like wouldn't you want to watch a medieval show about like maybe boromir is a big character issue he's showed me he's close enough i was like eh, whatever maybe i don't know <laughs> Just, yeah I can't Same believe that know. was the hook back then, but then you know it made its own identity, and then it became iterative and sludgy, and then we got the fucking that ending. It's a really what a decade. Wow. <laughs> what can you say? Wow. You know? It was a crazy time. It was a crazy time. It was the best of times. Now it's the yeah, worst, it's worst of times. It really was. It really fucking was. But it's all right. We're living through that now because we've got the Rings of Power coming out as well. Oh, and... wow. that, that's, yay! That yay! Something. I, I was talking to this mo uh, sorry, I, I was talking to Moller about this um, behind the Next scenes week. before we started, and it was like I watched the final trailer um, that they've released before you know, the show <laughs> actually premieres, and fuck me, like the the, <laughs> odd, the, the soundtrack that they picked for yeah. this thing is like something at the CW. It's so like, dude, even <laughs> the normies are like, what is this music? Like even the ones <laughs> that are like, you know, we're excited about Lord of the Rings, you know, like or whatever, like. That trailer's music was Dude, awful. this is like, this is unprecedented. It's, it's like a concert and the band are like, we're going to be doing this. And everyone just goes, boo. <laughs> the, whole, the whole band are like, well, what do you want from us? You just go, fuck off. <laughs> just go <laughs> Why did you turn up? It's like to tell you to fuck off. Like, we don't, yeah. to, don't play. The oh, dialogue as well. Like, our hearts are bigger than our feet. Like, ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the fringe is strong with it story drink it one day there will be a writer who makes a thing in hollywood someday oh, we'll get it one god. Day. wait so what is this thing about black aragorn because somebody brought that up in the oh, chat so that's a magic the gatherings uh, yeah, card. That's... So on the magic the gatherings card the artist made aragorn black oh yeah but oh. that's that that's just a playing card 
game mm-hmm. thing that I don't understand because well, all yeah. right then. That's all. I was just wondering. I was like, wait, what? Aragorn's black. <laughs> but it's okay. We've got black elves. We've got black Numenorians. We've got you know. Hey, there's Persian orb. people in this drinker. Like, I finally feel seen. I'm so like, oh my god. I, I just love this idea of like we're just gonna throw them in there. It's like we're not gonna explain it. It's just they're there. Okay, <laughs> just fucking accept it. Don't question it. They chose like the gayest guy to be like the hot dude elf that's banging the human woman oh you mean I, Don Lemon? I just i i look at no. him and i just think of uh worm tongue no wait what the fuck was his name gray worm yeah, from gray worm. Oh, gray yeah. worm. he looked like he was constipated the whole time like just <laughs> yeah that that's what i get from this dude it's not gravitas it's just you look like you're trying to hold in a fucking shit they're like oh, trying to God. get like Legolas, like with what happened with Orlando Bloom, and like every girl mm-hmm. losing their mind over him. But they're like, oh, but we have to do it. Uh, we have to get a person of color that's also LGBTQ plus to play him. And it's like, I don't really but think you know what to do. He's also LGBTQ plus. I didn't know that. Have, just... Go follow him on Instagram. <laughs> Look, <laughs> okay. Hopefully, hopefully, the result of all of this is that everyone's encouraged to go rewatch the Peter Jackson movies. All right. The hope. I, I just I hope that's what we get. But, I just watched I mean, the Peter Jackson trilogy uh the other night for like the 20th time, extended edition, of course. But I was like, yes. Absolute glory. God damn the if you watch all three of the extended editions, that is so you're a good serious. person. You are a morally good person. Yeah, you do anything else, you're <laughs> yeah. morally bad. Person. You're part of the solution. But this is the thing, I've never <laughs> seen such fucking um antagonism towards a show i've never seen such a negativity towards any show before it no, even premiered. Really. this is like literally rollers. every clip that they put up online gets ratioed into oblivion this i've yeah. never seen it before and this film with fucking morbius jokes and shit. <laughs> there's all kinds of references and then just basically have a, a general sentiment of please fuck off but they won't yeah they're not yeah, it's gonna... like it's, when it, it's like when the comments are just like, I love when Harry Potter grabs the lightsaber and throws it into the. <laughs> 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 you know, like something I would say. Everyone oh, here no. is old enough to have seen the change. We, once upon a time, when they announced like we're adapting this or we're doing a sequel to this or we're reviving this, we'd be like, "Ooh, this is yep. really cool, yeah!" Ooh. Everyone, without fail, now tweets about like how oh. Fuck, they're coming after this. Dude, right? that was me because back in the day they were talking about making Cowboy Bebop live action the movie, and I was like, Yeah, let's go. And, you know, it was like Little with did you know. Leaves. And then all of a sudden they're like, Okay, yeah, we're doing it, but with Netflix. And then I ended up making a petition to keep it canceled because I was like, Yeah, Fuck, man, this is this is just terrible. But what they're Don't... doing to these shows and these characters is like Yeah. Nothing we ever wanted. I don't know. I remember when I was a kid and I, you know, I loved to read. So I read like the series of unfortunate events and Aragorn or Aragon, excuse me. And Mm -hmm. I remember getting so excited because they were getting made into movies. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I saw Aragon. I was like, what the fuck was that shit? And then. Of unfortunate events and i'm like how can you fuck this up oh and Anna, i'm right just, with you when they crammed three books into the one movie and that was as if you actually because i think the last book uh was coming out and i'm like you guys fucked this shit up in these for like the first three books you guys fucked it up so bad that you can't even do yeah, the rest yeah. of the books because yeah. you fucked it yeah. up and so as a kid watching that like it makes me very hesitant for anything well, else. I'm like, well? no, if you fuck up Aragon and the series of unfortunate events, I can't trust anyone to adapt. Anyone, yeah. So I've been Did you watch the Netflix adaptation of it? I did not because I'm still traumatized by the first one. I it's tried, good. I- it's better. I, I didn't like have it. You I read all of the series like of unfortunate events, so. You didn't like it, Mahler? No, I haven't. No, but I, haven't read I might not have given it a good enough chance. I was just going to ask Anna, what did you think of casting Jim Carrey as Count Olaf? I thought it was weird, but when I was little, like when that movie came out, I he was like pretty popular because of Ace Ventura and all that. I was more irritated with the kids casting. That's fair. Yeah. I, I didn't think uh, Klaus looked like Klaus. I think Mr. Mr. Poe was perfectly cast. <laughs> Timothy Spall like felt like he was born to play Mr. Poe, but he's just not in it very much. It doesn't really matter. But the uh, new the, the the Sonic villain Jim Carrey is one of the best Jim Carreys I've seen. Man, like he he looks just like Doctor Robotnik, and you see like his evolution. <laughs> I, I can't believe amazing. those are they're like success. They're just they're liked. <laughs> it's 
is such a weird thing. This I happening. love him. Fucking I love him. Jim Carrey's Doctor Eggman is battling Sonic. And meanwhile, all this <laughs> bullshit's happening. It's just like, that's going I on. I fucking over love them, the man. Way. They're fun movies, and they actually listen to the fans. And I'm like, you know I, what? I, I think it's that great. more than anything else is what sold them to people. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, we, we've taken your criticism on board. Yeah, we fucked up. We're going to try and do better. Mm -hmm. and did you did. watch Chris Chan's review of Sonic? No. I, uh, I've never watched a single Chris Chan thing ever in my life. I, I, like, I, I never never content? Uh-oh. Wait, you're not ready? Are you ready for the trial? You, well, yeah, no. No, no yes. the trial? I'm ready for the trial oh, through Nick Ricciardo. I mean, if he, if he fucking you. streams that shit, I'll be there I know, like, that's the guy who day. fucked his mom. His elderly, yeah, okay. Wait, what? senile oh, mother. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that um, happened. Yeah, I mean, Nick Rick, yeah, I was gonna make a fortune out of that. I'll be watching. Yikes! Um, mm. that, Chris Chan was brought up, and we're all like, "Whoa!" Without Chris Chan, like those <laughs> two kind of come hand in hand, literally. He, he who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. shit. Like, Too late. <laughs> Um, actually, we've actually got a shit ton of super chats, and um, yes. if we've got a little bit of time, we can go through yes. a few of them. Let's do it. All right, all right. I'll try and make them. I'll try and make them interesting, which is hard. Um, RRTNZ. Wow. Damn, <laughs> the rough on a Marvel script, dude. <laughs> that's, that's, not the chat. that's not because the super chats are boring. That's because my boy, my my voice is inherently boring. But I'll do my Aww, best. you have a great voice. Uh, so, uh, Sim, Sim. Hey, RTNZ said, uh, My super chats are working again. Huzzah! Great review of The Long Kiss Goodnight, which is a fantastic movie, by the way. Um, lo love Gina Davis in that. Um, mm. It's a real 90s gem. Don't waste too much time on this She Hulk rubbish. Instead, have one on me. Cheers. I mean, I think that's right. pretty good Aww. advice for life, really, isn't it? Hey, we already real wasted quick, so much yeah. time on it. <laughs> uh, Drinker, have you seen Bullet Train yet? No, I haven't, but I am going to see it because I want to review it. It's really it good, man. Uh, it's really good. I did a spoiler-free review on my channel, and it's I, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it because I really liked it. I The trailers made it seem kind of shit, but I get the impression it's a lot better than they are making it out to be. It's just super entertaining. Like It's just very like an entertaining movie. How is That's all I can really say. It? I loved them. Yeah. I was like, I forgive you for wearing a skirt. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> it's, it's uh yeah. You guys can answer this better than I can. Has Brad has Brad Pitt still got it? Oh right. yeah. yes, yes, yeah. hell yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. in this movie, <laughs> like you yes. get it. I just want to highlight. Yeah. You almost Didn't said you watch Brad's Once bit. Upon a Time in Hollywood when yeah. he's like building the roof. I was like, oh my oh, god. god. Yeah, this this movie could have used a little bit more shirtless scenes, like Bullet Train could have. But it, you know what? Did he he at least so take kick ass. Months? No, but he was so kick ass though, dude. That I was like, okay, whatever. I this is fine. Ooh, it's amazing. Yeah, well yeah. acted too in that. Yeah. Nice. He always gives the impression like Brad Pitt's going to get old when he decides he's goddamn good. Yeah. And ready. Yeah. Just, <laughs> don't right. give a shit otherwise. It's great. Hey, man, Tom Cruise, good both. Oh, hey, yeah. here's yeah. the difference between men and women. Men age like wine, and you know, women are like. I don't like Harvey <laughs> well, some women do wow. too. I think some women do. I think Angelina Jolie looks great right now. Her only issue, like, I think if she, you know, put on Wait, maybe a little more weight, but tell you, man, Salma, Salma Hayek and, and Jennifer Lopez, like, they just, oh, decided, oh yeah, they oh, yeah. They look good. all of the women that you are talking about are millionaires. Did yeah, you it's see? easy well, to look so over over the men all too. the money. <laughs> there, are, there are plenty of millionaires that aren't like. What's the lady from uh, Book of Boba Fett? She's a, incredible for her age. She's like, she's, oh, oh yeah. she's gorgeous. Yeah, but it's does she also have the signs. power of Asianness to help her? She does. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, the, the power Asian. of Asianness. Did you guys see Nicole Kidman's new pictures on? on yeah, yeah she, she has what's like, called. Like, a it's jellyfish beautiful. haircut where it's like yeah, bangs to here and then just long. Bizarre. I'm sharing I, it right now, drinker. Oh, hold it's on. It's so dumb. But she does look. But her body, okay though, still. man. Her oh, body well, looks out like crazy. Like she's on like an intense regimen and dieting, and she's like mm -hmm. she's a little obsessed. Sim though, with can't her take over. Sim. But <laughs> it's so crazy yeah. though because a lot of people in in my comments because I was like posting about it are like that's because she's on that bug diet and she does eat bugs. So right. I'm like, is this really what's what going fuck? on she with really her body? Though? They're trying to I, convince I, us to eat bugs, and I'm not doing it. Oh, exactly. I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys. Model. 
I don't know if you, any of you guys have seen The Northman, but Nicole Kidman's in that. Uh, oh, and yeah. It, it's weird because, like, it's obviously a very minimalistic kind of film. So, like, it's meant to be in, like, the medieval times so people don't have makeup and they mm-hmm. don't look glamorous, obviously. And Nicole Kidman's there. Her face doesn't quite move the way she needs it to because she's had uh, quite a bit of work done. Yeah. And it, oh. it's, yeah, that's oh, where it no. starts to, like, give oh. way a little bit. Uh, that was a great I, movie, though, man. Fuck. It was, was fun, it? I heard yeah. mixed reviews of it. I I just I loved it. I got bored with it. I mean, I liked. Mm. I really liked the the beginning oh. of it, especially and that the first, just like how how primal they were with fighting and everything like that Ooh, was epic. Right. But I did yeah. get bored, unfortunately. It's uh, it's not your conventional movie. Like it doesn't adhere to the kind of standard Hollywood um, like structure of a film. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people have. It's like you're kind of waiting for like big payoffs that don't necessarily happen. And you know, I think that. something else that kind of ruined the experience for me is I watched it in theaters with my dad. And so I wasn't prepared for all of the awkward scenes. <laughs> What's <laughs> not like the drugs so and the me sex. and my dad were just like, Oh okay. no. <laughs> I think if I watched it not with my dad, I would have enjoyed it more. Dude, the same thing happened with me. My sisters are like, let's go to the movies and see Magic Mike. And I was like, I'm not having dad take oh, us. And of course, he so- tricked my dad oh, into my- taking us to Magic Mike. He thought it was about magic, not stripping. Oh, it is no. about magic. <laughs> my dad had, he was wearing a cap and he was the any of the sex tripping. scenes, the uncomfortable scenes, he would put his cap down over his face and just say, Aww. just tell me when I can look. Oh we've, we've all been through the awkward yeah. scenes like that. Like, I remember watching The Terminator with my dad and they gets to the sex scene with yeah, Linda yeah, Hamilton yeah, and it's like, yeah. oh god, it's just the worst way it's me. No. I don't know if you guys remember, but like, I was like, ah, oh, 300, it's a movie about a bunch of soldier dudes gonna fucking annihilate a bunch of zombies. Come see it with me, dad. <laughs> and then at the beginning of the fucking movie, there's a very intense slow motion yeah. sex. You know, just like, don't know what's going on there. Oh, no. gets, we watched at home as a family, and my mom started like swooning and moaning because she loves Gerald Butler, and all oh. of us were just like, "Mom, oh, no, 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 mom, no." no. Mom, you're doing the loud, quiet part loud stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Uh, all right, I'm going to do the next super chat here. Uh, Scott Lawrence, he said, can they do a She-Hulk versus Ghostbusters 2016 crossover? Oh, I don't God, think the no. world's ready for that. Maybe a gender swap Shawshank Redemption where the main character escapes in 15 minutes or she cast away so they can just fuck off from my TV. Uh, I mean, you could indeed. Um but yeah, I would love to see Ghostbusters 2016 crossed over with the uh, with She Hulk. Um, next one is from Chucks and Housen. So this is a this is a three parter. Okay, so bear with me Ooh. on this. One. I'll read it all out. Um, says, "Cheers, drinker. Just got to say thanks for sliding deep into my DMs earlier to tell me Ooh. how excited you are for Cobra Kai season five oh and the return of Mike Barnes. I mean, who isn't?" Uh, he was the ideal Cobra Kai student, and yes, Daniel San was afraid of him. The dynamics of the two would be electric on screen. Also excited to hear uh, your happy hour review along with Jeremy and Tom when it happens next month. And I know the four of us are going to have fun chatting about it. Uh, you guys are going to do it again. Well, we might just do that. Uh, Cobra Kai season five is coming out next month. I'm, I'm so more excited. Ready. Ooh. I'm more excited about that than I am about Rings of Power. Oh my god, me too. I think Are everyone is. Yeah. God, that's such a good show. Cobra Kai is like how you you reboot a, 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 yep. you know, a show that's done so well. No, I don't want to shame Mauler, but I'm absolutely going to do it because he hasn't seen it yet. And that <gasps> makes me Mauler, cool. what? I haven't either, so... <gasps> Melanie, yeah. what? Right. Come Both on! You. you guys in the middle bit there, you should be ashamed. <laughs> middle bit? Kick so Mauler and Melanie. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'll be shamed with Melanie. That's fine with me. Go to the corner. You go and think about what you did. Yeah. Or didn't do in this case. What you didn't yeah. do. What you didn't do. Yeah. Oh. Uh, JK what you do. Yeah. The next one who says, uh, afternoon, ladies and man of long and the host. Uh, what's the deal <laughs> with writers forgetting or disregarding what came before in the continuity? Uh, also, 
Um, like an incredible Hulk, uh, Blonsky was a terrifying character, basically the only character other than Thor and Thanos not to piss themselves before fighting the Hulk. And now he's a spiritual um, guru and almost crying about how he just wanted to be Captain America all along. It's almost as if they're two completely different characters. Oh, it's about uh, Abomination? Yes. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Um, if you guys have seen the 2008 movie, he's all about power. He just wants to be stronger and stronger. He's really interested in being as strong as the Hulk. But now they've argued that he was hoping to become someone like Captain America, which is like, I don't That's think not, so. I don't, I don't remember that movie, that movie like that at all. Stronger than Hulk. But the one thing about Hulk is that Hulk's power comes from his rage. So the angrier he is, the more powerful he is. So just base... Abomination is stronger than him, but that's the thing that Abomination, you know, didn't anticipate about Hulk is that even though he's stronger than him, Hulk has the potential to get stronger. So, is this in this episode or is this in a different? It's in episode two, but it's episode two thing, where she meets Blonsky, and he's the basically one thing like I'll say, a reformed character now, or he tries to be. Well, yeah, the one thing I'll say is it could be a lie. It could all be a lie, right? Like Blonsky's bullshitting because he wants to get off. Like this, that could be it. Uh, well, we'll but see. then, like, how how do you go f from doing that and then like convincing your your lawyer and then all of a sudden breaking out and going to a a you know? I have so no this, idea this is, how they'll explain is, that. Yeah, this is retrospective where it's like footage has emerged of him breaking out because we saw him in Shang Chi where he did this yeah. shit. But it's oh, like I didn't watch Shang Chi. That happened, that happened in either. the past, and it's almost like it's coming to light now that he broke out from prison. It's um, really weird, and I have no idea because Wong is going to turn up in the show too. So I imagine he's going to say like, "Oh, I, I needed, I needed to break him out to have him in Fight Club for some like what the fuck could dude possibly Wong be the is in like every single fucking yeah. MCU. Why, you know? why are they pushing him so fucking hard? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Know. I think Wong is the glue that keeps Phase Four together. It's like <laughs> everything. It's like what the fuck? I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why they love Wong. They but... need some sort of continuity, and then he's he must be the affordable continuity for yeah. every. Yeah, but because shows because up God on forbid time. it'd be actually Doctor Strange, because God forbid we have a fucking white man that can do things. But... Yeah, to be fair, Doctor Strange has showed up in a lot. I feel of like he's a lot right? more expensive to get Ben. Right. I'll give it to the actor that plays Wong. Like he. Brings he's a great. certain gravitas. I, like to it. I do like. Yeah, him. I, I like yeah. him too. I like Wong as a character. He's fun, but it just makes just... no sense that he's in everything. It's right? Like, okay, yeah, we have yeah, one I show agree. without Wong. Like, okay. Well, like they're already going to make him a moron in this. If you watch the trailer, she says like we have uh, we have to go by the book here. You know, follow the law. And he goes the book of Vishanti. It's like, oh my no, god! Wong, Wong's not a fucking alien. He knows that there are laws. You morons! <laughs> Fuck off. Um... Rob the no Builder man is says, safe. <laughs> yeah, says to know. us, uh, hello, drinker and ladies. Uh, I'm reading Dark Harvest and all like, uh, I can't help but hear the drinker's drunken voice with every sentence. I mean, that's just my life, to be honest. Mm. Um, all right. I'm out of here before I start simping for Mauler and Melanie. There you go. Aww. So Excellent choices. You got a sim yes. to both of you. <laughs> you guys would have lost him when you both admitted you didn't watch Cobra Kai. Yeah. That's why they're excellent choices. We we allow there to be great experiences left to experience. That's okay? right. I mean, so, you sent, you... sent the super chat before you made that crushing admission. <laughs> so. It's going to take you know, back. You're right, though, Mahler. Like, you know what I would do if I was you is, you know, watch Rings of Power and then, you know, balance it out with some Cobra Kai so there that you, you can have some faith it's, it's back like... in the world. It's like a direct exposure to cancer and then some chemo. Exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. When my mom got back from watching Thor Love and Thunder, I was like, why'd you put yourself through that? She's like, I don't know. And I was like, mom, you haven't watched it, man. Watch it now. Do a palate cleanse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it man. Yeah. What's that? I don't, I don't know. Oh, it's so that. good. It's a, it's on Netflix. I mean, it's a martial arts movie. I haven't is seen it? it forever, but it is so good. It okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. You check out Reacher and I'll check out. Okay, Apple. let's go. Okay. <laughs> um, next one is from Johnny's who says, Greetings, Drinkler and Longman. Have you any hope for House of the Dragon as a series when we ultimately know where it goes? And it's 2022, not 2011. I mean, that is a pretty valid question, I would say. Do we have hope for it being halfway decent? Um, what do you think? Oh, doggy! Uh, Sorry, Doge. Holy shit! What is it's that? Muffin. Muffin. She's overweight right now. She's having a fat girl Aww. summer. Oh, 
You need to get Nick Ricada to fat shame her. I know. I've been been, like giving her subtle hints. She's so cute. Subtle hints like she's overweight. (laughs) (laughs) You're fat as fuck. (laughs) Like muffin, no more snacks. But I think everyone gives her snacks and we can't keep track of who gives snacks. That's a problem. I'm just going to love her. Oh. No. I can't. Okay, I can't. So what was the question of the super chat? I'm sorry. The uh, who cares at this point? <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. So it was for it was kind of for me and more, but I'll put it out to the whole panel. In fact, do we think that House of the Dragon has got potential to actually be good, or is it just going to be another woke, um, you know, shit show like what we, like what we get now? I, uh, I think it has potential to have some really good scenes from Matt Smith as far as acting. And uh, that, I, as far as story, I don't know, but I'm yeah. I'm we're gonna see, see more Matt Smith. I think we're gonna see some kind of like revenge or lashing out because he's pissed that he didn't get to be uh, the next in line. Oh yeah. Oh um, no, that's not what Chrissy. It already is. Everyone knows what the plot is going to be from the book. Oh, I don't know. I didn't read it. <laughs> oh well, Chrissy. It's a Google search away oh. at this okay. point. But everyone knows what's going to happen because it's going to happen. They might, they might change, change it. Bob's. There's gonna be a lot of cousin fucking. Yeah, if, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> if if gun to my head, they tell me to put a bet on it being good or bad by the end. It would be bad. I'd assume bad, but uh, hey, I could be surprised, you know. I think it has potential because, especially if you're holding it up, let's say against Rings of Power, not against Game of Thrones, but against Rings of Power, I think it has potential to be better than that. I, mean, I, anything has I would potential put money on it be definitely being better than Rings of Power. Yeah. And she Hulk. <laughs> And probably and Andor, too. Yeah. I mean... You guys uh, remember like, Andor's coming out? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. That, that's a thing. Uh, no. I No. Literally um, dozens of people were excited to watch that show. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know dozen. if it's going to be as good as Game of Thrones, like, at in its height. But hmm, it's no. sure as hell probably going to be better than season eight, for the love of God. At least this one has an ending. We know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be better than how Game of Thrones ended. Exactly. Because I think they've learned some lessons from that. I just thought it's not going to recapture that cultural zeitgeist of Game of Thrones. It's not going to like get lightning in a bottle. No. A, a second time. You know, no. that was a, a unique kind of experience that everyone just got absolutely caught up in. And I think they lost so many people with season eight that uh, you're not going to recapture that magic. Exactly. Um, Daniel Monroe says, evening drinker, the panel, and all of chat. Uh, no specific question this time, just to say that you guys all rock. Well, thank you very much, man. Thank you. Uh, J.S. Pena says, Rexy from Jurassic Park is a better female character uh, than MCU She-Hulk changed my mind. When he said Rexy, I assume he meant Lexi. Um, but yeah, I think she was. Uh, she had a character arc, so that was something. That's probably more than we're going to get from She-Hulk. No, she I learned that she was really good all along. Yeah. Uh, this this one's brilliant. Uh, Craig Wilson says, the scene where Sauron says, you complete me, and Galadriel replied, you had me at hail, was stunning and brave. Oh, God. you That's what As and Gary said, is that they're going to ship uh, them together now. And I'm this, like, is this, is the rumor, this is the rumor that uh, Sauron is a spurned lover of Galadriel, and that's what they're turns gonna it bad. Bang. He's an incel. He's an incel. Hey, they made Doctor Strange an incel in his own movies. So like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That wasn't. That they made an incel strange. serial killer. Isn't that he was banging unreal. What's your face? Are you sorry? You said Doctor Strange is what? Um, fuck, I'm blanking on the word now. You just said an it. Incel? An yeah. incel. Isn't he banging? What's her face? No, she got married. She's not with him. Yeah. And they find a vision of himself that got so sad about him not getting with girls that he would kill any Doctor Strange he found that didn't have a girlfriend. He yep. was an incel serial killer. Damn. What? Mm-hmm. Wait, wait when's your movie? Things ever. When is your video coming out? Friday? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that's coming oh, out as I'll soon as it'll that. allow me to with movie. copyright. I've got a whole section on that because I have several okay, reactions great. to the fact that <laughs> the big Friday. evil Doctor Strange is that he's an incel. It's is is, is it still shit. on schedule, Mahler? Like Friday? You think it's gonna? Be- he it's does. Funny. He can go to any bar and pick up a desperate woman. 
No, you can't. He's just a magical wizard that's the greatest hero of Earth. He can't he can't pull. He can't make this happen. He's I'm six sorry. something, a doctor, and still yes. has a he can and pick he up can fly. Do this and make <laughs> your panties come off. You know? <laughs> you flick too um, hard, damn it. <laughs> yeah. well, it's yeah. like the more uh, the more qualified he is, then the less his pool of options are because like the the desperate just ones aren't to gonna do it for Remember the episode where it's like, oh, you're British. Just go to a random town in America and you can bang a bunch of chicks. Just watch yeah. that scene. There's this Absolutely. solution to his plight. Um. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the, that kind of argument, too, is it's just like, oh, you're hungry? Just go down the street and, and eat bugs. Like, come on. What's the problem? There's food. It's available. Well, it's not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell yeah, that to Nicole Kidman. Better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one was from uh, Chris Hart. He says, uh, when she said, it's Hulk in time, I cried a little. I mean, didn't we all? It was a good uh, part, yeah. Uh, Michael C. says, drinker, you articulate, sorry, you articulate arbiter of artistic assessment. Have a drink on me. Wish I could watch the full open bar live, but not tonight, unfortunately. Cheers, man. Well, you'll you'll get the re-upload when I put it on my second channel, so don't worry. Um, 2D Boy says, wait. 2D Boy blunders into his room. Uh, leaking tea over all over his carpet and a piece of toast almost sliding off his plate. I'm here. Run the intros again. Well, I'm afraid we can't do that right now, but you'll get to rewatch it. So you, you'll be all right. Uh, the Smeeks says, Hail Drinker, Mauler and the ladies. Uh, Hail all, Drinker. Been enjoying the new book. It pulled me from Stormlight for a bit. High praise that. Uh, Mauler, your plushie is awesome, and I want to see you on EFAP. Oh, you're getting that. Uh, 24 hours of EFAB at least on Saturday. Ooh. And plushies, yeah. of course. Yeah, 24 plushies. hours of plushies. That's I'm so getting one because I did miss the first one. Where can we buy them? Uh, so they if you go to the right. description, the link is in there. You can, there you are you you cuddly and tentacly, which is just yeah. what you look for. <laughs> a little creature. I <laughs> like the rags one. The rags one is cute. The rags has got one coming out. It's on the way. His next Another one is one? pretty damn cute. Yeah, yeah. I is it even cuter everyone's... than the first one? I'm. Not, I wouldn't say whether or not it is. I think it's wonderful though, and I'm looking forward huh. to getting that as well. Okay, I got the Nux one, and I thought it was going to be the same size as yours. And this one's huge. So is yours uh, the bigger one or the smaller one? Um, makeshift do two sizes, I think. Um, ours is the regular one, not the huge one. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be interested in maybe doing a huge one. I don't know. <laughs> like... So that's the Nux one, and that one's pretty far away, so you can kind of see how big that is. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. This is Father Ted shit right here now. And is, oh God, is it small or is it far away? To me at uh, Anime Matsuri and wanted to take a picture of me and your plushie. And I was like, what the? It was so <laughs> <laughs> So there's some picture of me somewhere on the internet just holding your plushie. Yay. Yeah. A, when, I was, uh, when I was in Tampa, a bunch of people brought plushies. Like, just, like they, they couldn't get them signed or anything. It's like they just wanted to show me them. I was like, yeah, let's go. Cool. That's so cute. <laughs> Let's see your kitten, Melanie. It's Coltrane. Oh, oh I like when their arms go like this. Yeah, they, oh, I've seen the them. Coltrane. They, they do the cat temperament test. If you pick up your cat and you and it and they're just like they kind of just hang there. Apparently, they have good temperaments. <laughs> wow, like you. their arms are like like double hiled, and that's bad. Well, double yeah, and then if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you pick up your cat like this and. And Aww. push like toward Dude, a wall, your cat's and they just friendly. kind of fold into the wall. They're very tame. My cat would be like, "Get Aww. the fuck out of here!" Yeah, my cat freaks right the fuck out even if you touch them. So, Aww. not my cool train. He looks oh, mildly terrified right now, but that's okay. my cat is like <laughs> yeah. camera shy. Like I can't do that. Like when I pick her up to like show her on camera, she's like, "No, like I don't want to be Aww. here." And she like leaves. Aww. It's really cute. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, got, I've got like greyhounds so they just like basically sleep in the background <laughs> yeah. and someone asked to see it this is how big it is the drinker and mauler one about like half the size yeah of it. That, okay. That, that, okay. This one's pretty, pretty freaking big i didn't expect it to be this big but Anna, it's not about she the said, size that's what she said okay. Yeah. I, would, hey, I would go Chrissy. so far as to call that showy. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of mad because I wanted them all to match and so this oh. one was ridiculously mm. large and I'm like it was the only one that was available, so I'm kind of irritated that it's Her OCD can't be larger yeah. than the rest of them. So big. Goodbye. 
<laughs> She's like, bye, I'm <laughs> out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh my god. I, that's the fucking mic drop out. moment. Yeah. <laughs> And fuck you guys. Mahler, I have a question about these plushies because when I click on the link, mm. um, it only yours is coming up, not Fringy's. So, because really? you said there was a 10% off thing if I get both, but I don't see his at all. So, where is, is that? I think if you scroll link? down, there's like, a, yeah, there's a mention of Fringy's one. Fringy's plushie. Yeah. Uh, oh. If you scroll down, you can see a, it's it has like a blue word for Fringy's plush and click that as a hyperlink and it should take you to Fringy's. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I must have missed that. His is pretty cute. And you get a vial of goo with his. Who knows what that can do, you Ooh. know? Powerful stuff. Oh my. Fringy, Fringy goo. <laughs> Roll Fringy goo. Stuff. Only yeah. to be interpreted in wholesome ways. I'll, uh, I'll do a couple more of these super chats and then finish up, I think. So, uh, next one is Matthew Hammond, who says, I see people complaining about how short it was. Uh, didn't Disney do everyone a favor that watched this? Um, I, I think you probably, yeah, you could pretty much make that case. It kind of feels like there's enough plot here for, like, maybe three episodes, and they they probably, like, spread them out just so they can get, oh, like, yeah. a series going. Same thing every time, man. And then there's the whole, like, they ran... I don't know if you heard this, but they said that they were going to do a whole plot line for the law aspect of uh, Emil Blaski's case, but then they realized they can't write law, so they didn't. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, so they just, like, cut out a whole portion of episodes, moving around. Apparently, the, the original idea as well was that we weren't going to get her origin until episode eight, but they yes. chopped it out and moved it back because people would feel disjointed not knowing what how she got her powers early. Imagine that. Oh I God. cannot fucking fathom the horrors That's... of working on anything Marvel right now, where they're just like, by the way, scrap all that, move that there, this goes here, you have to do this, this, that, the other. All the fucking writers and directors must feel soulless, because they're, not... they're just like, what do we do next, Master? Yeah, they're not cleaning up the loose ends either, because then on episode two, it just kind of starts with her like, oh, by the way, if you, in case you missed it, I'm, I'm a Hulk now. Yeah. We just saw yeah. that. Just saw it. <laughs> Why do we need the recap there? <laughs> Yeah. Um, Tuny Boy says there's been so many open bars that the characters are getting ruined and we're getting franchise fatigue now. Well, I mean that's inevitable part. Like we're in the mature stage of uh, of open bar. Wait, so did you just technically get to the MCU phase of your open bar? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's what we've become. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we got a two to one ratio, right? That's what it's just required. like the BBC. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I've accomplished in like an hour what Kevin Feige is taking like years. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you, Kevin. I'm ahead of you. I'm ahead of your game. Uh, and the last one here is uh, for everyone from Richard Stamets, who says, What is a film that you loved when you were young and naive, and now that you're older? You see what it actually is, and it's bad. Uh, for me, Ooh. that was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh. Interview with the Vampire. Now I see it's about grooming. <laughs> no. Oh, my, oh my God. God. What? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It wanted to keep her little forever. No, but she didn't. That wasn't, that wasn't the story. Yeah, Have you that... read the book? It's not, not about there's a book. Yes. No. Oh my god. Chrissy can't no, read. No, no. Why would you? <laughs> Why do you think I can read? Oh, Chrissy, you yeah. should have dyed your hair blonde. I okay, love it. It is blonde. <laughs> I'm actually a natural blonde under this. How dare you, Chrissy? That movie's amazing. <sighs> um. All right. I'm trying to think about mine. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I. I. Th this is the problem that I have, right? Because when I compare older movies to like movies that we get now like they generally improve with age right. exactly you know what i mean like i i don't really have that problem of like oh yeah like uh, i thought it was great but it turned out it was kind of shit now it's more yeah, like wow i've actually come to appreciate it more as time has passed up yeah everything yeah like somebody was up. somebody told me like what's your guilty pleasure movies the other day on twitter or something and i was like i all my guilty pleasure movies are actually good movies. Like, for example, Billy Madison. Like, I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Maybe it's a guilty pleasure. Did but you read the book? There is no book for <laughs> Billy Madison. Get the fuck out of here, Chrissy. Um, well, but if there like, was, I would. I would read it if there was. Chrissy, we talked kid, about um, Anne Rice on Simpcast. <sighs> when I was a kid, I loved The Mummy and The Mask of Zorro and stuff. And I'm looking back and I'm like, pretty sure there's a fucking still good <laughs> yeah, okay so there you go like mask of zorro you know i haven't seen that movie in a long long time i wonder if i would enjoy it as much as i did when i was i think younger. you would 
we watched it for Defat Movies, which will release one century, and uh, it was it was wonderful. We were very happy with it. Anthony okay. Hopkins is fantastic in it. Nina! As per usual. Ah! Hi! 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 I ever bought because I was so in love with Antonio Banderas when I was younger. And okay, think about this. If they would have done the Force Awakens, but just copy the plot of the Mask of Zorro, wouldn't that be fucking awesome? Mm. I, I know, you, I know what you mean, awesome. but I could see people being like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> it's like, I know what you mean. I know. No, I just, it's like, with, uh, just Antonio. Well, the idea, yeah, yeah, the uh, idea of an effect. Yeah, 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 like replace awesome that light. with Luke. It could be so fucking good, but they're stupid. But yeah. yeah, They are. That's correct. They are that is of. correct. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of movies I can I can't really think of. We we were spoiled. We were genuinely we were spoiled. spoiled, especially like good cinema. Like I mean, I think about what I grew up with. Like even you know because my mom exposed me to a lot of classics. So like you know I grew up with like Casablanca and Some Like It Hot and you know Gone with the Wind and like really good movies that are just amazing and to this day are they still hold up. So it's really hard for me to be like, oh let me think of like a shitty movie that now. Would be even shittier. Yeah, I can't think of one. How about the like first Sex in the City movie? Yeah, there you go. Like that's, that's a pretty good example, actually. Yeah. We're talking about like how Incredible Hulk was pretty hated on for ages, but now people are like. Yeah. I mean, at least we got to see him rip a car in half and use them as boxing gloves. Like that was fucking epic compared mm -hmm. to what we're getting now, which is or like, like that other Superman know, movie. Um, not Man of Steel, Return. but yeah, oh, Superman Returns. Yeah, yeah that yeah. one. Because what well, he talking about the fact that um, like Hulk was asked him. whether or not he holds a grudge, and he was like, "I got a, I got a very heartfelt letter," and me and Emil are like friends now. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. yeah. Again, imagine like the drama you could have from that if she was represented. Exactly. This guy, and like he learns about it, and he's fucking furious because mm -hmm. it's like the guy who almost destroyed his life. You know that could be great, but it's like, no, nah, it's just a joke. It's fun. It's nothing. Uh, cares. Nothing matters. Know. Nobody cares about anything. Just move on. Hmm. Whatever. Yeah, that's where we're at now. Um, someone asked me as well, like uh, The Rotten said, uh, when's the Critical Drinker plushie re-release? Uh, very soon, actually, so Ooh. stay tuned because, Ooh. yeah, you're going to get an enhanced drinker plushie, apparently. Um, and st some stupid punk, this is probably a, a good one to finish on, actually, says, uh, glad to be here for this show because I've had a rough week, so everyone's Aww. thinking lost his way. Aww. Uh, and I need to hear drinkers say, nah, it'll be fine. So there you go. <laughs> uh, but it will be fine, man. You, I, I'm sorry you've had a shit week, but I hope things get better for you, man. You're, you're oh. almost at the weekend now, so it's going to turn around. I've got a good feeling for you. Wait, we need to share this before we end a drinker, because this is awesome that Anna just posted. Look, it's you. Oh, wow, little you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, you're actually levitating there. <laughs> no. It does Wait, look, they, are, it does the, look the, like the, it. The, the, it the does. Perspective, the perspective is fucking floating. with my brain. My At first I was like, why does it like look like you're foot floating? Off the floor, but then I was like, no, wait, no, you're not. Wait, what? Oh no. Oh my it's god. Weird. No, but like the, he was super, them. super nice, and those are his two girls, and they came and they were uh he, he brought up our, our Mexican food debate drinker, which I feel like everyone just brings that up. But uh, I know. <laughs> Become part of like drinker lore. I've never. Knew. I don't remember. I don't know about this. I, I feel so like I need to we did our the first stream he and I did together. We talked about Star Trek, and then they have dinner at like an Italian restaurant, and then drinker and I got into a debate about food, and that's literally all anyone ever talks to me about whenever they <laughs> mention him. And I'm like, come on. Really? Yeah, I, I think I think chat misconstrued what we were talking about, but basically, I think my my like thesis on this one was like uh, Mexican food is a little bit samey. It's like it's it's all very nice, but it's all basically the same shit. That's just you said like, about Italian food. Yeah, like where I was, what was I saying about Italian food? Yeah, apart from pizza, like Italian food is all just like basically pasta That's and some that. kind of like. Wow, so you don't know shit. Because exactly. there's a lot of chicken and, and veal, like, caprese. Like, what do you guys eat? You guys don't know the butter yeah, usually. Yeah. I, I think maybe it stems from the fact that like I'm not like a big fan of pasta generally, and so like maybe that's what like. Is there a round actual Italian conversation about food that 
is all the only thing people ever bring up to me is like you got a school drinker on Mexican food, and I'm like, I'm the worst person. I, to I like food with. Things, I like Mexican food. It's just like I'm kind of realistic that like a lot of Mexican food is like a lot of the same ingredients, just like in a different mm -hmm. format. You know, you're, you're, you're from the UK. Your opinion on food doesn't count. <laughs> Shot fired. Burn. Indeed. Yeah, we've reignited the old debate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah like uh, I, I know we've been streaming for like a good few hours now and um, it's probably a good time to finish up um, because I'm going to pass out soon but <laughs> <laughs> I want to say guys thank you all of you for coming on for this it's been fucking great to have all of you guys on I appreciate thank it you. Um, this was thank fun. you this was fun yeah, yeah. The, the sorry it's no, yeah, that better late than never. But the the link to Nina's, Anna's, uh, Chrissy's, and Melanie's channels are all in the description. So please give them all a subscribe. Um, they absolutely deserve it. They all produce amazing content. And uh, do it yeah, now, yeah, man, do it now. Do it now. It's not the Tuma. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I we're, we're very very lucky to have them on tonight so thank you guys and thank you to everyone in chat thank you for the the super chats um as as more and i always do we'll do a super chat catch up so we've missed any Hell yeah we will absolutely get to them all uh, and thank you to my my fucking fantastic mods who've done a fantastic job as always tonight i appreciate you guys um and yeah remember um also mauler's plushie is available so go for it in the description will add limited time, cuddly tentacles. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, <laughs> cuddly tentacles. That's all you need. There you go. Also, I have a cosplay calendar that's live now on Indiegogo, and I think it's coming to a close in like six days. So if you guys haven't, go check that out as well. Yeah, so and Jack I, Show I, tonight I, on Anna's channel, right? Yeah, yeah. Jack yes, Jack Show tonight, my channel. Nina's coming. Yeah. Alex Stein's going to be there. Ooh. I like that oh, it means at be... midnight, like tonight. What do you mean? <laughs> What's happening? You guys so are. If, wa if you're watching this like six months from now, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be at the Pap City Comedy Club on September 8th, and that's in Austin, and the Helium in Philly, September 14th. Check it out. Come and laugh. Uh, I'm going to be uh, in my house making videos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> I already passed out at the nearest bar, so it's all good, man. <laughs> anyway, thank you for everyone. And uh, that's all we've got for tonight. So go away now. Bye.